Hello and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's new episode of Primetime Gaming with Mr. Boomstick and Friends. And yes, indeed, I brought some friends. Uh, obviously, one friend, Hargeet Chani, under the weather, but he's still here for your entertainment. Hargeet, how you feeling outside of having a cold, dude? Yeah, well, it's been an interesting week. Last week, unfortunately, one of my cousins passed away, so it was a ah, funeral dude, over the weekend. I'm so sorry and, for that, bro. And so then uh, came back, and now I have a cold. Um, but yeah, outside of that, <laughs> it's been okay, <laughs> I guess. Uh, but yeah, it hasn't been as much of a, a news week, has it? But uh, but still, well, whatever we have, we'll talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, I mean, the, the biggest news of the week is the whole PlayStation Five Pro stuff. Obviously, we saw what happened with the uh, the. Uh, what the hell was the guy's name that had his video, his video like uh, struck down by YouTube? Um, Moore's Law is dead. Moore's Law. law. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Um, obviously, when when the corporations get involved, that means that he hit the mark. Uh, and uh, the mark is kind of shaping up to be a seven hundred dollar console, folks. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I I'm I, I know that I'm not in the market for a new PlayStation. My PlayStation Five is looks great. It's got Spider Man covers. It's Works great. I don't need another one. Um, we're going to get into some very interesting numbers because I know that there is a lot of uh, chatter, uh, specifically the report that we pulled from WCCF Tech uh, is basically saying that, yes, the world is ready for a PlayStation 5 Pro. I I thousand percent disagree, but we'll get into that. But of course, making his return debut, hashtag gang gang, my brother from another, the Black Viking. Here you go. Click, click. <laughs> let's go. How you doing, brother? We outside, baby. We outside. Yes, we are. <laughs> no, it's, everything's good, man. I appreciate you having me on again. In good company with Hargeet Chani. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I think we we Gucci, man. We want to uh, throw probably, you know, get in the mud just a little bit probably. But, uh, you know, we're going <laughs> to keep it civil, you know? Well, you know, we're here to have fun. Uh, sometimes, yeah. you know, slander gets in the, you know, you, you <laughs> kind of mix your peanut butter with your chocolate and you just, it's a tasty meal all around. So, That's you know right. what, at the end of the day, folks, we're here to have fun. We're here to keep it positive. Um, look, at, I'll say this. Um, we are waiting for Kayasante. Oh, speak of the devil. Here he is. Kayasante. What's up, dude? How's everything? Good evening. I, I heard slander. I was like, hey, that's my cue. No, <laughs> what's going on, gentlemen? Good evening, everybody. How y'all doing? What's up, man? Uh, no, it's yeah, good. It's uh, we, we, We're going to get into it. And you know, it's funny. We, You and I talk pretty much every day. And, uh, you know, sometimes the needless one or the grown back <laughs> knee one is, is in that conversation. Right. The, the real slanderous about. one. <laughs> yeah, he's very slanderous yes, indeed. Yes, yes, um, yes, indeed. And uh, we talk on a regular basis. And this morning, me and Kay were talking about playstation 5 pro and we're going to just jump right into it Kay, i'm going to go to you first because this conversation i specifically like i always learn new things from Kay Asante. he's very technical he is the my go-to guy for anything when i'm having an, an issue technically i'm like well you know that's the guy to go to and we kind of were on this this road where we feel like sony gave its fans the rope adult with this play with the PlayStation 5 Pro because it's interesting. And I know that I'm not the only one that remembers this. The PlayStation 5 comes out in 2020, right after the Xbox. I think it was like a month, maybe even a little bit less. And I know that I'm not crazy. In 2021, we started hearing about a PlayStation 5 Pro. And I'm like, wait a second. The freaking system just launched last year. How are you talking about a pro? So mm -hmm. the question is, Kayasan, they did they know that they re they released an undercooked co console, and now here we go, the PlayStation Five Pro, not officially announced, but enough for Moore's Law's video to get struck down by YouTube. I think he got yeah. a channel strike, and that is like two, one more of that, and that's the channel. Uh, that that's yeah. like that's like yeah. the death grip. Um, so he obviously put some stuff out there that was close to the mark or the actual specs. And Sony was like, no, get the lawyers involved. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This so thing, I have thoughts. Yeah, let, let, let's hear the thoughts because th you usually talk like this with John Wolf, who's in the chat. John, I love you, brother. Indeed. Thanks so much for being here. Obviously, you have your show on Mondays, which is a kind of a tech talk kind of a show. Let's hear some of that tech slander, sir. <laughs> well, OK, so. I, although you and I are on the same page by and large about this, I'm not sure 
I would go and say it's necessarily a rope dope, right? Uh, I'll put the end at the beginning. Uh, uh, um, um, I think they're just good marketers, like better than most, right? That's what they, I think. They are. Say. They are the leaders yeah. for a reason. Um, they're exactly, good marketing. Right? Yeah. So everyone, you know, we we hear all this back and forth, right? Oh, and and how is it that uh, Xbox has the best console, quote unquote, and somehow? PlayStation outdoes them and da, da 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 all this talk, right? And you and I were talking uh, uh, on this morning, and I gave you an analogy, an analogy that I think really works best here, right? Uh, you get, and I think I may, I may have said this on the show before. You get out in the morning, right? You got to go five miles this way to go get your car. You got to go five miles that way to get the coffee. Depending on where you go, which whichever decision you make, going to the other thing gets harder. That's just the way it is, right? If you go five miles in the left to go get your coffee, it's now ten miles to go get the other thing. All right. It is just the way it is. Right. And because PlayStation is the reference design, by and large, they go that way first and then they do what they can to go the other way. Right. Which what does that do? It always gives you a comparable product. It, it, they, they don't start there. And if they don't start there, they never use what's available there as their reference design moving forward. Right. So in that world, the not so powerful console can beat the powerful console every day of the week because everything they use is used to its fullest fruition. This whole conversation came out when we saw uh, 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 WCCF Tech talk about, hey, you know, what's the quote? There is no uncapped potential on PS5. So now we need a new reference design. We need a new, a new, a new a benchmark. Right. Th- what does that tell me? It tells me that PlayStation did what PlayStation does, what they continue to do, which is give you incremental increases, right? Give you the increases that you as the consumer want to see, right? They define it as next gen because you can see it, can't you? You see it with your eyes, can't you? Yeah, there it is. Look, it's next gen. Do you see the puddle? You can see your face in it. Oh, it's amazing, (laughs) right? And that is the definition of next gen. And they say it over and over and over again. They talk about the magic of the, the SSD, to the point where people who think SSDs are venereal diseases start now, now, now talking about it as if they have any kind of authority in it, right? And then as soon as they go, yeah, the jig's up, maybe Call of Duty won't outshine us. We won't shine on Call of Duty anymore for reasons. Now it's time to hit a new benchmark because like they're saying, they've hit the ceiling, right? You thought the great games you were seeing were the tip of the iceberg. No, that's the whole iceberg, right? They gave you just enough to justify you buying a new one. And now they'll give you just enough more to keep justifying buying a new one. Are you saying, are you saying that they sold us a PS4 pro pro? That's exactly what I'm saying. That is exactly exactly what what I am saying. He said, when you said, you said it, you said it was the PlayStation pro PS4 plus plus. 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 (laughs) That's what I said. And and now we're getting a PS5 this holiday. Yes. Okay. And 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 even checking. in that instance, <laughs> even in that instance, PS5. Well, so the reason I say this, right? The reason I say this is because people talk about this this device like it's going to be so performant and so great when they say it's ten percent more performant compared to the last one, which then brings it in line with what Xbox is today. Right. Right. They say, oh, it's got all this machine learning stuff. It's going to be super interesting. The pisser's coming for you. Guess what has an equivalent like protocol and process already the series x does and so does the s yes it has it today right but because they are the market leaders because they're the ones that can market the heck out of their stuff and and look no shade on them for being able to do that right like i'm the guy walking around saying look guys don't think ray tracing be even more ray traced is what defines next gen it's about it's about your apples rotting in your inventory. Hashtag D- D- Dragon's Dogma 2. That's next gen, right? <laughs> that is what that is. But you can't see that, right? You can't see it on, on a flashy commercial, right? So what <laughs> they will do, they'll show you cool puddles and they'll go, that's next gen. And you will take it hook, line, and sinker. Pause, no Diddy, all of that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, and it's funny. You, 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 you mentioned Diddy. Look, look who happened to be in the chat. Uh-oh. Boom, no Diddy, them <laughs> cheeks. Oh, I have been summoned. No. What can I help you with? Boom. I love Listen, that, if you're the that, real that Diddy, mean, bro. I'm going to say I'm going to take a pause on that, brother. But thank you so much for being here. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you understand what I'm saying, right? It, it's, yes. it's very logical. 
like they are not giving you the, the the bookmark definition of what that next generation is. They're giving you what they can sell you as next gen and you yep. take it. And then next time they'll incrementally increase it again and they'll give you another one. Look, it's next gen, look at it. And then you'll take it, right? Because they sell you on it and you go, wow, this is amazing, right? This is just the tip of the iceberg. No, no, what you're seeing is the whole iceberg until they give you another one and another one. This is the game, right? Now, let no one here who's hearing me say this think that I'm giving them shade because they're able to separate you from your dollars, which is exactly what they're there for. Kudos to you guys for doing it, right? Now, it is in my best interest, and it's, it, it, it's the part that I play is to sit there and be like, well, actually, don't fall for the banana and the tailpipe. Don't fall for the okie doke. You know what I mean? It's my, my, my purview to say that, and so will Hargeet, I'm sure, and the Black Viking will weigh in. But at the end of the day, they are good at separating you from your coin. And because of that, that's what their mm -hmm. business they're in. So I can't fault them for it, right? Like, that's just the way it is. All I'm saying is, long story short, you and us as, as the hardcore consumers, if you're watching this, you're part of us, right? It is in our best interest to not fall for that okie doke, right? To go, eh, we see what you're doing there, but I'll wait for the actual real next gen stuff, right? Uh, it's it's up to us to to know that even if a tree fell in that woods and you weren't there, it actually did fall, right? Just because the people say we have the greatest console ever doesn't mean they'll produce the best games, right? You can have the mm -hmm. the illest sneaks, but you ain't dunking on Jordan. You're just not. <laughs> Skills are part of that equation. You know what I mean? Yep. So you know while they're selling you on this hardware, and I, and let me be clear, this 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 console may come out. I don't think that it's not necessary. Right. Well, I think I was even talking to Everborn and yourself, Boom, about it. You know, uh, why is this necessary? Why was the 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 One X necessary? It was necessary to take the the Power Crown back. Did they sell ridiculous amounts? No, but no. because of that console, they took the power narrative back. Right? Uh, was it necessary to have the discless PS Five at at launch? Hell, no, it wasn't because it was taking even more money from their pockets. But because even one of those mythical devices existed. They could say, hey, our console starts at four three ninety nine, dollars right? Yep. Could you ever find one? Hell no. But at least it was out there and somebody got it. So now they can use that as a narrative build, right? So I honestly think there is a reason for this hardware. There is a reason for this console, right? It, is it to move units and set a new benchmark? They're going to tell you that, but it's up to you to either listen to that or not fall for the okie doke. You know what I'm saying? Oh <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, you know, speaking of falling for the okie doke, your baby's mm. father says PlayStation oh. guys enjoying the tip of the iceberg and the banana in the tailpipe. Hashtag <laughs> for the payers. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I see there's going to be a lot of uh, sexual puns on this particular podcast <laughs> thanks to uh, Diddy making Good an appearance. Uh, yeah, innuendo. <laughs> in, 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 uh, yeah, absolutely. Look, um, Great stuff, Kay. And again, you make a lot of sense. It's, it's, I think, I think Viking knocked that out of the park. We said, are we actually getting, well, not we, because I'm not buying it, but are players that are going to purchase the PlayStation 5 Pro actually just getting a PlayStation 5, but just with a Pro on it? Uh, yeah. Hargeet, I, I want to go to you next, but I, I pulled, you know, I, I'm a big numbers guy. Like you guys hear me say this evidence based conversation is something that I enjoy having because we can argue which box is better. We can say which franchise is better and who's better at making that said franchise. The one thing that we can't argue are actual and factual numbers, Hargeet. So I went back and I pulled a few things. Um, so I wanted to know the actual official number of PlayStation 4 sales in total. Uh, and right now, the amount is 117.2 million uh, sold worldwide. Right, that's that's an astonishing number. No one is no one's even uh, questioning that. So I went and did some digging, and I wanted to see what of those 117.2 million consoles were of the PlayStation 4 Pro, and it turns out I was able to find that via Reddit. And the PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4 Pro at 2020, at the release of the PlayStation 5, had only sold 14.3 million units as of that particular January. So when you consider 
the one the the the, the 14 minus is minus the 117 it's about 112.8 give or take million playstation 4 they didn't sell a lot of these units i bought one um i actually bought two uh well i bought one when it came out and my mrs boom got me the the um god of war edition so i was good for two um but 14.3 is not a lot of consoles especially for your pro and and i'm going to be honest with you i think that this is what's going to happen um, I think that the enthusiasts are, are going to go out and buy this, as they should. If you're a PlayStation guy or gal, you should go buy this because you want maximum power. You want ray tracing. You want to be able to say you got 45% on the on the GPU and 10% on the CPU, and you're going to feel like a champion of justice. Good on you. Go buy the go buy it. It is going to cost you though. Uh, <laughs> I think justice. it's going to be yeah yeah. I, I think it's going to be a $700 device. It's Sony. Sony's going to Sony, as yeah. the kids like to say. Let's get your hot take on whether or not they act, the world needs a PlayStation 5 Pro. Yeah, look, the, the, this one's a tough one, right? Where would you, what would be the next thing that's a value? And they're, they're trying to say there's going to be 60 frames. They're going to cut back on some of the, the resolution, give you a lot of features, and maybe that'll be enough to be able to scale it and still give you 60 frames. Okay, that's possible. Um, we'll see what that means, but if it doesn't really do that, then it's going to be kind of a waste. The whole point of the mid-gen refresh last time was we kind of switched from 1080p TVs to, to 4K TVs. 4K, and, yeah. and suddenly you started to see like, okay, this isn't looking as good now. At 1080 and you're scaling it up, it's, it's good, but you're starting to miss out. And now you need to kind of make 4K content. And both you know, the, the PlayStation side and the Xbox side decided, hey, we'll put out a mid-gen that, that'll scale up better on 4K. Cool, good enough. I think it actually hurt the generation uh, following, like the current generation, because we kind of got the upgrade. We already got the 4K. Uh, that would have been the big deal, but that's not what happened. And now we're getting incremental. This is basically, it's like the PC world now, right? That basically we have the same hardware. We just have minor incremental upgrades and you kind of see certain things getting better, but it's not really pushing the envelope because, well, it's a PC. Essentially, it's a PC on both sides and you're going to get slight upgrades unless you go crazy, um, which would cost a lot of money. So, you know, that's kind of where we are. Is this thing going to matter that much? Look, you can, you can take some hints from what they're saying, right? There's a, a CPU bump that's slightly higher. That right. puts it pretty much a little bit a high, you know, higher than what the Series X already does. 3.8, it's a 3.85. Okay, great. That's not going to be materially different. Um, and you look at the GPU, they're saying it's a 45% bump. Okay, that's 10.28 to what? 14.9, something like that. That's probably what it's going to be. Okay, all right, and, that's and cool. Let's be real. That 10.28 is also fuzzy math because that's 10.28 variable. It's usually like 9. It is, something. it is. So. And... and and, and and basing it on some of the things they're saying that 95% of the time they're able to actually give you both of those at full speed with 3.5 and 10.28. So, okay, fine. I'll just take their word at it and say, all right, you can do that. Fine. Right. And, and okay, if you're going to do that, say 10.28, so maybe about 14.9, but let's say it's 14, right? And then you, you use double execution. You're at the, the you know, high, maybe, you know, low 30s or high, high 20s teraflops. Cool. All right. Do we know how that's going to work out? Well, we do because we already have the cards, right? The, the GPUs coming out, out from AMD have already been doing this. So we kind of know what their relative performance is. Um, is it going to blow away your, your 4080s, 4070s, and 4090s? No, it, it's not going to come close. Uh, but it's going to do something. It's going to do you know something of interest. The CPU is going to be the limiter. There's no way around that. Um, are they going to do hardware-baked ray tracing and stuff like that? Cool. We'll see what that means. Right, I hear all these things until until you show me. I don't like, yeah, okay, whatever. It's like UE five, right? But I always said like, okay, show me, show me games running sixty with with UE five fully baked. Show me, right? Until you show me, I I I won't believe it, right? Show me, right? If you can show it works, awesome. If it doesn't work, well, <laughs> duh, that's what I was seeing. So, right, so until they show me, it'll do something. I don't know now. They're pretty good. Sony's pretty good. That they can kind of push the envelope and work with people and make things happen. Fine. We'll see if they make that happen. Is this necessary? I don't know. But just like the mid-gen last time, neither one of those consoles was the lead console. The, the One X was not the lead console. But I think it was like 20%, 15% was the One X. 
The rest of it was Series S, right? It was, a, the, it was the 1S, right? And that's the way it goes. We were seeing the same thing with the Series S versus the Series X, right? The Series S was outperforming as far as sales, the Series X. Again, like you just need a console to play, right? People just buy whatever they can that's cheap and they just play, right? Ultimately, it's about playing games. The, the high-end stuff is enthusiasts. How many of those exist? Well, you kind of got the numbers, right? It's 15-ish percent. They might go buy this thing. Maybe you'll get less than that, right? A lot of people are now now figuring out the whole PC market as well and saying, well, do you, wait, why don't I just go to PC? Like, everybody's putting their games there. And now, like, PlayStation's kind of fully committed to putting games on PC. Mm, maybe I do day that. Day's coming, I can have dude. a console. I keep, I, keep, I, I keep seeing the conversation. Day and date right? is it's an like, announcement away. Right. And so you, you just you, you, you kind of lose out some of the market to that. Right. Uh, and, and this again, like these are like the, the superpowers of Xbox is that they own PC, right? right? That they can take advantage of that. If they want to do it, they can really take advantage of that and start pushing way into that direction and say, yeah, well, goodbye, Sony. And like they've been saying, PlayStation and Nintendo are not their competition. It's Amazon and Apple and Google. And, and they're trying to you know, you know, it, it, like just pivot to that level and say, like, we need to go there. Fair, right? But we'll see what that means in the long term. Uh, but is this thing needed? I mean, it's cool. I, I'll just say, look, so for people that want hardware, they'll be like enthusiastic about getting something. I don't want to take that away, right? Some people will be happy to see a new piece of, of hardware come out, a new console come out. I'd equivalently say if, if say this year or next year, Xbox puts out a uh, portable, uh, that would be kind of interesting, right? And if it, it doesn't perform as well as, you know, the PS5 Pro, does it matter? No, it's it's the fact that you have a portable format that may have the Xbox UI. That's kind of cool, right? And we'll see where that goes, right? The Steam Deck is lower performance than all of these things, but it's still selling. And there's a reason. It's it's a cool device that gives you a portable in a, a, a console-like interface. Yep. And so people buy it, right? And it's just, that's, that's all it takes. So, and we'll see what happens when we get the new Switch, right? What will that do to the market? It's an interesting time. We'll see what that means. It, I don't expect it to sell that much, but I assume they know that, right? That they're not going to sell 40 million of these things. They're expecting to sell 10, 15, 20 at most. And that's okay. It's a marketing thing. It's a get your enthusiast behind the console thing, right? That's what they'll get out of it. I do have an interesting question, though. How many times does Microsoft get leaks? That seems to happen all the bloody time. How many right. times have we seen anybody get struck? No, I yep. don't remember. Honestly, I look, any YouTuber will tell you that <laughs> channel strike is a death blow uh, because what happens is if you get, I think it's two, uh, maybe I, I, I've only been doing YouTube. I think it's three. You get three strikes and you're out. It's three strikes and you're out. But, but I mean, I'm just, I'm like, so Nintendo and, and Sony are both kind of like this, right? It, 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 remember the leaks of uh, yeah, yeah. Last of Us, <laughs> Last of Us Part 2, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Last of Us Part 2 leaked and all these channel strikes are going everywhere to try to get, like, dude, like, Come on, what are, you, what are you doing? Nintendo does this notoriously. They hate why anything about them. the. They're yeah. they're they're horrible, right? Yeah. Microsoft doesn't do that. Microsoft, who has the be the, the the higher number of lawyers, the the, the better lawyer? It's Microsoft. They're the freaking most valuable company on the planet. But they don't go after people. You know why? Publicity is better than than killing people. If, if Microsoft went after big bad Microsoft, started coming after people. Yeah, right, yeah. that would be very negative for be them. Disaster. Yeah. yeah. Why isn't it negative when Sony does it? So, like, this should be a massive community to say f off Sony for doing this. Yeah. Right. The bigger story, yes, there's a story about the actual specs, but the bigger story should be Sony. No, you can't just strike things down because somebody put out information about something you didn't want to release immediately. If the information is legit, it should be out there, and that's the way it is. You don't like it too freaking bad. Yeah. Right. Instead of striking no things down, you need to stop this crap. But well, there's a lot of this going on right now. It, it's one thing if it's defamation or something. This is just something you're going to release in like six months. So somebody put out information about something. You're gonna, they didn't do it themselves. They, it was given to them. They have it. They have. They put the information out. Right. And now you're striking things. Down. This this has got to like stop. This whole craziness has to stop. But it is what it is. This is what they do. But I would say the community should push back on it. All of community, all the entire gaming community should say. No, 
Sony, yeah. you can't do this. Well, well I don't think Sony, they didn't do that do with the insomnia leaks then. They don't yeah. think they struck anybody with those leaks, right? I don't recall they, seeing they any did, right, for that. because it went to the media. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. A lot of the stuff that we that went to the media. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. Well, I mean, they, they, they got to protect their interests, as they say. <laughs> they, they absolutely right? do. Um, Har Hargeet, like I said, for me personally, you make a lot of great points, especially about the the pushback. I'm gonna tell you why you're not gonna get it from the PlayStation community, uh, and it's not everybody, but this is a good portion of them. They asked for hundred dollar games. They the said to Sony, ridiculous. we will pay you a hundred dollars for the next God of War because it's worth every penny. So these same people are not gonna push back. They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna just take it. And that's just what they do. Are, are they the meek meals of the community? What's happening? <laughs> oh wow. Oh wow. Nice so reference, there, wait. dude. Um so you know what, Black Viking, let's let's bring you into the conversation. Uh obviously. The story that we are referring to is uh, by WCCF Tech. It was posted yesterday. Uh, Francesca, Francisco Di Mayo is the one that wrote it up. Uh, the lead, uh, uh, well, the, the the lead title for the article is PlayStation Five Pro is needed for advancing visuals performance, as there's no untapped PlayStation Five potential due. To the CPU GPU design. Now, obviously, that's something that uh, Kaysante talked about. Where did they get this story from? Well, they got it from uh, a, a leaker, uh, an AMD leaker by the name of Kepler. He commented on this, and uh, he was he actually kind of did a, this huge post on Twitter uh, and regarding well, there not being this mythical untapped power for the PlayStation 5 because what's interesting is during GDC that just happened a couple of weeks ago we heard uh that you know that were a lot of developers were like hey we haven't even why why the pro we we yeah. haven't even tapped out uh the PS5 yet and now Kepler comes out which again he's I don't know who he is but they used him as the story lead so it's fine obviously he knows what he's talking about Viking I I I think that there is look if you're in the market because you want a slightly more powerful Series X in the form of a PlayStation 5 Pro, I'm yeah. not going to fight with you. Go and buy it. Spend your money. I just think that this thing is going to be costly. I think Sony is going to Sony. And on the second half of this conversation, folks, who in the chat, throw one in there real quick before we, before we get to the topic, have a feeling that there are going to be pro versions of old games and Sony is going to charge you ten to fifteen dollars for them because I believe they are fifteen dollars is the, the what I think the the pro version of God of War Ragnarok the pro version of uh, of a uh, you know Uncharted collection they're yeah. going to try and up uh, upraise you for fifteen bucks they're going to try they're going to repackage it and sell it uh, is what they're going to do Viking let, let's talk about the PlayStation Five Pro is it actually needed though well so I'm I'm of a kind of a different mind here I, whenever we saw those leaks i'm sorry i'm probably not close enough to my mic whenever we saw those leaks we saw that in february there was about 123 million monthly users for playstation right and with that well not no in february it was 107 million but there were still 71 million people on the ps4 this was just last year in february 71 million people still on ps4 right and then you fast forward to december and then there's 123 million so you could probably cut that 70 million down to let's just say 40 right like 40 million ps4 users still their strategy could have been that's who that's who we're marketing towards the people who haven't upgraded yet but the problem with that is we are still you know those those top 10 games that always stay there your fifas your maddens your fortnites your call of duties they them yep. shits are still cross-gen yep. they are still cross-gen so until that changes to where you can only get madden on the next gen console then there's there's literally no need for them to switch over the graphics are fine enough <laughs> for madden or 2k like there's no need for it unless you want haptics which most people don't like i i tend to enjoy the haptic feedback on uh the, my playstation controller but most people don't 
don't need that. They just need somewhere where they can play Call of Duty, Fortnite, Madden, FIFA, and that's it. We are the one percenters, right? Like, and if you're that power hungry for for the frames, as you say, buy a PC. Then get a fucking PC. Yes, well, see, indeed. See, see, Viking, I'll even I'll even challenge you on one thing though. Yeah. If you were that power that power hungry, wouldn't you have gotten a PS5 already? Because they've already marketed to you that the SSD will save your life. You would have already bought into it by now. Yeah, you would have. A hundred percent. The pro is not gonna get those those who are on PS4 out of bed because they didn't right. care in the first place. One hundred percent. But but here's here's the rub a little bit, right? Because we did say, and we all know PlayStation, they are marketing geniuses like when it comes to 100%. you forking over your dollars over some bullshit they 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 got you right mm -hmm. so one interesting thing that i read from the verge which is how i think they're going to actually market this thing um sony is asking developers to create a new yes. ps5 pro exclusive graphics mode in games yes. yep we were all used to thinking like okay well this is kind of on par with the series x now so when the developers you know develop for the ps5 pro right it'll help xbox but playstation was like we need that mode exclusive you could port the ps5 version over to a series because they're the market leader they have the leverage to tell anybody anybody no you will make mm -hmm. this mode exclusive whether it's 40 frames 60 frames upscaled more ray tracing you'll make that mode exclusive to us and you'll port the bait you'll port the base ps5 version over to the xbox series x that's what kind of i'm afraid of but i feel like that's what the, that's what they're going to do you know what i mean and, and it's well they're well into their right to do it because they are the market leader they have I mean, the leverage they have the well in their right it's not in their right but they have the leverage to do it they, is what they, i'm saying well, yeah, you don't you, have con out there waiting for for them <laughs> for microsoft to give them a new, that is new, true you know that is true. You did, yeah they might yeah. not be able to do what they do it you know? that was a, a wrong choice of words there but yeah they <laughs> they have the leverage to do that yeah, which is crazy to me right. man and yeah. i think i think gamers in general should like i would hate it if microsoft did that you know what I mean? Yep. Like if they have like imagine whenever in 2026 they get the better, you know, they have the next gen console out. But let's just say let's say they had a mid mid uh a mid gen refresh out this year and they said, "Well, you can only make this version for us and then the lesser version for." I mean, it's like not even like the free market's not free marketing. <laughs> you know what I mean at that point. So, um yeah, that that the the pisser technology <laughs> <laughs> that that kind of I was like that's what they're gonna do, man. Because I saw that exclusive word on there, and I was like, yeah, they're gonna do some shadiness with this shit, and then it's gonna make this Series X look weaker when it's not. You know what I mean? They're just porting the base PS5 version over. And now and you understand why Microsoft up. is putting their arms around all the platforms, going. Hey, you want console? Here's that. You want PC? Here's that. Because when they play in the PC waters alone, mm -hmm. young Odin gets to act as ridiculous as they do. Right? Yep. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, but then every digital foundry thing will come out and they'll show that this is better on the yep. you'll hear the same old oh. bullshit. There you go. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. It, it's always the same, right? Like, okay, whatever. It's it's yeah. unfortunate um, that uh again it, it's it's rare instances that uh, that Microsoft even gets credit for. I mean, look, here's a perfect example. Tomorrow, uh, we're going to be talking about the announcement from Rare where uh, they crossed 40 million players on Sea of Thieves. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, that's a really big deal. Um, but you know what's crazy? The, the rhetoric was, it's, oh, because Sony, play, it's on PlayStation. Folks, it's not even out. Like people don't even do that. No, you're not on PlayStation. It's not on PlayStation yet, and it's not on uh, on Switch yet. This is only on Xbox. But even when Xbox hashtag wins, they don't, right? Because people, you know, it's Always it's, it's, the way. It, it's just ridiculous. But yeah, I I do want to kind of segue to where the you know Viking. I'm gonna go right back to you on this. Yeah. Um, 
you know, you talked about that article where it was confirmed that Sony has reached out to the development community and it mm-hmm. didn't specifically point to just, you know, the GTA maker and take two or EA. It's they're they're speaking to the development community. Right. And in doing so, they want these pro versions of games for their pro version of the PlayStation 5. Right. Now, what's interesting is this thing we're we're walking on a razor's edge right now and I'm going to tell you why folks. Um Sony was one of the first people to adopt first platforms to adopt $70. Uh mm-hmm. we heard they wanted to go to $80. Is there a world, Viking, where not only will PlayStation 5 Pro games be more, 5 or $10 more, but older games, like let's say, for instance, your <laughs> God of War Ragnarok, do you think yeah. that's just going to get the free upgrade for your PlayStation 5 Pro? The answer is you're out of your effing mind if you think so, because they're right now charging people $10 every time there's a new version for the PlayStation 5 of some old ass game where you get it for free on Xbox through smart delivery and I I'm, I'm 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 telling you folks I'm telling you right now Sony is going to Sony. What are your thoughts on that Viking? Um I I kind of like I'm going to be devil's advocate here a little bit. I want to take a bet. I'm a, I I think that they the the perception of that would be so horrible like i'm not i'm not going to put it past them they've done it with ps4 to ps5 but they've never done it with mid-gen i don't think so if they did it with mid-gen refreshes like a ten dollar upgrade to spider-man 2 so you can web some more webs i don't i really (laughs) i don't i don't see it i like I don't think that they will because the perception of that would, would be so. I think even the media would be. Horizon Forbidden West that. says, hey, they tried to do it there and people called them out and then they, they last they minute were, cro- called it back. I think, it, I think, I, th- I think it'll happen. I think that would happen again. I don't, I don't think, it, like, I think, you know, we all talk about, you know, the PlayStation tax break, you know, that, that they get. <laughs> I, I don't think that. I don't. I don't think the media would have it. Like to be yeah. honest with you, if they did yeah. do an upcharge for, I just bought this damn game, and you promised me on the PlayStation Five I would get this amount of frames at this resolution. It's not there now. You're giving to me with the PS Five Pro when I had to pay six seven hundred dollars for, and now you're going to charge me more to get the exact same thing you promised me. Yeah, I mean I, to I, to his point, I don't think they've ever done it for the mid gen, right? So PS Four to no. PS Four Pro. I think what you're talking about, K, is the, the um a four to five, the, the four to five exactly. No, 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 I, 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 the four listen, I and, and go five. understand that. That that makes perfect sense, and I and, and maybe I, I I misspoke. I don't. Again, it's Sony being Sony. No, and, you're right. I wouldn't put it past them at all. I wouldn't put it past them. I just I don't. But, so this like is the way they will do it. Is they'll say we now have the remastered rem we re whatever version yep, that has yep. all this extra DLC that you already could buy uh, that <laughs> that has the upgraded version, but we won't do that for the base version. So if you want to play with the higher everything, you have to buy the uh, super duper ninety dollar version. Uh, and, and here you go, here, here it is. Because look, they're cash strapped. This is a great way to get people to pay for a mm-hmm. game they've already bought yep. again, right? Yeah. So why wouldn't they do it? They yeah, want so to get money from you again. So why they could, wouldn't they, they could do disguise it, it Hargeet, <laughs> as, you know, like a perfect example, like whenever they did the Valhalla thing for God of War, right? Instead of making that free, give give me something more than just the extra frames or the the, the PlayStation 5 Pro version yeah. of it. If they mask it with like, you get more skins and New Game Plus and blah, 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 yeah, blah. Yeah, exactly. Plus you get this. Yeah, they will charge $10, but they actually just masked the 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 pro version for uh dlc i guess you would call yeah it. and, and yeah. then the upgrade cost will be to upgrade to that new version that gives you all these extra features which might be 20 bucks or something like that so that that's probably how they will i would i would be surprised if if, if they didn't do that for some of their games at least but uh, what's but what's came will. out that's been just PS5 only? We had Spider Man, we had Ragnarok, and what, what, no, was Ragnarok Ratchet was cross gen. Oh, not Ragnarok! Uh, 
Damn. Yeah, so it was it was Demon um, Souls, it was um Ratchet Returnal, and Ratchet and Clank, uh, oh. and then uh Astro, and uh we now have Spider-Man 2. I think that's that's it. I think that's uh Yeah, all that's happened. that's they don't really have much to, to, to go off of to do uh right. to do an upgrade thing, man. So that's L- looking by the way, just at their own first parties, right? They're, they I'm have other games. At, but, yeah, because yeah. like other publishers will be able to do what they whatever they want to yeah. do, right? And then nobody's gonna blame Sony for that, right? Like nobody's gonna blame Sony for Madden adding a PS5 Pro version of the game or a boost to t- you know ten percent or whatever the hell it would be. Uh, mm. like nobody would go after Sony for that because Sony didn't do it. They provided the tool for it to happen, but they didn't make that happen. But as far as Sony first party, when it comes to PS five exclusives, I don't know, like the stellar yams might get a new game. Pl- is, is it launching with new game plus? Mm, I don't think so. I don't think so. Don't think okay. Well, that'll probably be one of the first ones, new game plus, you know, some extra skins to make the yams more yammy. And then, <laughs> and then, then the bro- <laughs> slider for jiggle physics slider. Yeah. Are you are you saying that they're, they're going to get better the forty Ds? Diddy. Is that Wait, what you're yeah. saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gonna get 40ds oh, in man. better frames I yeah have just it. make them yams that's more yummy you know that's right uh <laughs> you know what i can see i can see gta do you want to play the do you want to play the vrr enabled version which is hashtag 45 frames per second hey here's ten dollars extra because you know we can't hit 60 <laughs> yes. that's what's gonna happen you know yep. yeah it's John I, Wolf I, said, yeah, I'll buy that. Of course you would, John. He's not even ashamed about it. He don't care. Um, listen, uh, Hargeet, I want to go back to you about this. Uh, this Again, it's a conversation. It's a lot of hypotheticals. Um, yes, they didn't charge $10 uh, for upgrades uh, for PlayStation 4 to play PlayStation 4 Pro. They didn't. Um, but this is, a, you said it, a cash strapped Sony. And if they, if there's anyone, you know, they're the masters of marketing, you know what they're also the masters of. And uh, that would be the nickel and diming of the world. And they love to nickel and dime you for everything. Um, And I'm just saying that when you hear the story that Viking referred to about Sony already going to all of the publishers and all the developers and saying, Hey, we want you to make this pro version mode for these games. Now, whether they're exclusive to PlayStation or they're not, there comes there's a cost that, that's added to that. You're asking these developers to make a pro version. It's going to cost more to make that version. How is Sony going to pay for that, that, that extra cost? They're going to lean on the consumer as they have always done. And I do honestly believe that maybe it doesn't affect the current 7643 if you live in New York price for your new PlayStation 5 Pro game, right? But I think it's very safe to assume that your older games in no way, shape, or form are going to benefit from being played on a PlayStation 5 Pro unless you pay for it because they Mm -hmm. did that to you with your PlayStation 4 to your PlayStation 5. They charged you $10. Because of this pro version, I would not be surprised, uh, Hargeet, that if it was a $15 charge. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it very well could be, right? It just depends on how they package it. I don't think it's going to be a, a, a straight, just, hey, you have to pay 15 bucks to get the extra capability. I think it will be more, here's like some new stuff we did with the game. And with that new stuff, we also happen to give it the PS5 Pro uh, treatment. Mm-hmm. And with that, you can you can pay the extra 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 50 bucks, whatever it is. And you will get extra content plus the upgraded visuals, blah, 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 right? Unlike the smart delivery process where the upgraded visuals just come for free. Right. Uh, I think that's kind of one of the things. Now, I wouldn't expect it for every game. I think they'll do that for, uh, for some games. They'll just do it for free. However... This is a very cash strap company, and you're gonna have to see, you know, like, what is Hiroki Totoki's mindset when you're looking at this, right? Are they making money off of this console when they sell it? If they are, it's gonna be very expensive. So, if it's if you know it's a $700 console, then who cares? They can just say, fine, we're making money off the console if people buy it. 
the chances are they're looking to have people buy this console and then see content that they'll want to pay for, right? Yeah. Well, if that's the case, you have to make them pay for it, right? So how do they get that money? They have to get that money by charging them for it. And that, that's going to be the, the headache they run into, right? So if there's nothing there, then that's not going to be a, a, a you know a financially you know good position to be in. So they're going to try to charge you somehow. Right. So my guess would be that's what they're going to do. They're going to say, hey, let's let's give you a, a bundle that has a bunch of content, but it also happens to have the extra, you know, uh, capabilities of the PS5 Pro. You want it? Pay for it. And even if you have the game, you got to pay an upgrade fee to get the new content, which happens to get, you know, unlock the the capabilities of the PS5 yep. Pro. Now, again, I don't think it's going to be universal. I think it's going to be something that's going to be like the bigger games. They'll just do that and people will pay for it. They just will. And, you know, that like, but they need the money. And I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not knocking them for doing this. It is what it is. They need the money. I get it. So, you know, if that's the way they're going to do it, they're going to do it. Right. And if the market doesn't push them the other way, that's up to consumers. Consumers can always say, well, I don't like your model. I'm going to go to the uh, competitor and we're waiting here. You can go ahead and buy an Xbox guys. Uh, <laughs> You don't have to pay for these upgrades. They're free. So you can choose the opposite and say, no, I'm not going to pay your upgrade fee, Sony. Uh, or you can go ahead and pay it, right? And if you pay it, you reward them for doing it. Guess what they'll do? They'll keep doing it, right? Yes. So that, that's the way it is. So the market le leaves it open to you. You choose as the consumer what you want. If you like that way, fair enough. Go pay the extra fees. Get your upgrades. You know, on the PC world, and this is why the PC folks keep saying this, you never pay for upgrades. You know why? It's just PC. You buy new hardware, you yep. can just use the hardware. <laughs> you never have to pay for an upgrade. You already own the game. If it has more capability, you just use the capabilities. <laughs> it's just there, right? So uh, this is just a console type thing, and Sony is the master of doing these kind of things. Uh, I, I guess I could say so, to some level, Nintendo is worse in that they make you pay for the game again. Yep, they sure do. The next version. <laughs> so you the have to buy the game. same game you've owned four times. Full price. Full price. For a time. <laughs> Full price. <laughs> so, uh, they're even worse. But, uh, but, you know, hey, this is what it is, right? So... Um, but yeah, look, like, you know, as far as uh, uh, consumer friendliness, it's just blatantly obvious Xbox is going into the very consumer friendly territory and Sony is kind of in the middle and Nintendo's the worst. And, you know, if you're going to expect something here, Sony's going to try to charge you. They need money. That's just the way it is. You can look yes. at the financials. You can look at what the, the Wall Street folks are saying about them. They need cash. They need money. So they're going to try to charge you something. I would expect to see a slate of games that are coming out with remastered, re whatever edition uh, that come out with the PS5 Pro. And there'll be a slight upgrade fee if you want to upgrade the version you have to that version, right? So, and that's how you're going to get those upgraded visuals. Uh, again, I think there'll be a couple that they'll just give you as freebies, but there'll be some that they will charge. The bigger games, they'll probably charge you. And you know so, what's crazy? You think is. that they would offer these uh, upgrades for free if you were like, let's say, I don't know, a uh, hundred and sixty dollar a year subscriber to PlayStation Plus. Yep, like that wouldn't be part of yeah. the perks. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of things that they don't get. If hell, they don't even still they still don't get MLB the Show, which is freaking bonkers. That's crazy. Um, Casante, <laughs> let, let's get to you on this, man. Uh, w w you, you've you said it before. Sony's gonna Sony, right? Um. But are they really going to Sony? Are, do, do you think that they're they're so cash strapped that obviously, you know, you got to remember, uh, ladies and gentlemen, they're coming off of the PlayStation 5 selling great, right? What was it? 56, 57 million sold. Awesome. Mm -hmm. But they're also, they took a bath on the PlayStation VR 2.0. Like they mm -hmm. lost millions on that. It's It's so bad. And it's sitting on shelf in so many stores, they stopped production on it, right? There, there's a problem. Um, do you see them nickeling, diming the fans? I mean, you know, they, that's what they do, right? They nickel and dime the fans. They have been for some time now. Uh, but at, to Hargi's point, I, I'm not seeing them doing that for foam stars. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, you'll get like, it for yes, the God of War, Ragnarok, you'll get it for, the Horizons, exactly, right? or you'll yeah. get it. You'll probably get it for the yams. You know, you you may get mm -hmm. it for the yams, but mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, as as we've said, and 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 uh, Nintendo has been brought up as well. The more you do that, the more they go, hey, it works, and the more they keep doing that, right? 
you know, and and while it may look like oh uh, Xbox is giving away the store, like you've seen those memes online, I've seen them as well. You see the third place, the third place winner kissing babies, and you know, yeah, and number one is Xbox, and underneath it, it says profit, right? That's the mark of success. <laughs> They'll just sit there like this while the third place finishers like yeah, I'm losing it all, even though at the end of the day they're not making the money, the margins are slim. Right. And we've also heard Totoki speak, you know, one thing I will say, and Hargeet brings it up, and I think it's a, it is an interesting point. They are cash strapped more than they have been. And there are different people in the room now. Right. Uh, yes. I've said this in the past. We always talk about them like like uh, like pick your favorite sports team, you know, but, you know, the leadership in that sports team changes a lot, even though the jerseys stay the same. Doesn't mean the same mindset is there. Right. Uh, people are screaming and, and bitching about Square Enix not putting their games everywhere. I think they're screaming and bitching about a historical eventuality that's never going to happen again, right? Because they've already yeah. seen their money gone. You're not going to have to complain anymore. Square is going everywhere, right? I think there's some of that in this soup as well. There's a world where Totoki ain't having that, right? Totoki oh might. Okay. Oh, please. What's up? I just I don't know why something you said just brought this mm -hmm. to me because you said the mm -hmm. the the adults are in the room now. That's right. Yes, sir. What? Okay, hear me out. They don't okay, lock. Let's go. Yeah, Epiphany live on the air, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. Don't they don't lock? This might be stupid. So, <laughs> but speak they, on it, they, sir. They let's don't. Go. They don't lock it behind DLC. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They lock it behind PlayStation Plus to get their subscription numbers up. Could very well Which, be. Would yep. be super interesting, sir. Yeah. Absolutely. Yubi does that. Hey, you want the deluxe blah, blah, blah edition? You uh -huh. can have it day one in the subservice. Oh, you want the 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 extra slider? Well, you're you're at you're at you know a uh, half half of a resolution on ray tracing. Now you get the pro version, you yep. get the full frame of resolution. Yep. Yeah, that's exclusive to our subservice. It is a possibility, because right? Because you get and you, you get you, monthly you, money for that. That's right. You yeah. know, as well as I do, they have a section for all their exclusives. They have a section for all their stuff, right? This is a money play, right? Yeah, I really guess what I'm saying is don't expect them to be craven in their money pursuits like they have been because those were different leaders, right? These guys who are in place now are just the this, this straight path to money, right? This is the reason why I say don't. Uh, there's a world where uh, um, Sony proper accept the, accepts the Game Pass bag and puts their games on Game Pass for PC because that's a straight line to money, right? Uh, the older leadership would never do that because, ah, oh, we want ours to be the best. But the new leadership that wants a yep. straight line to money and doesn't have to port their games, uh, if it's a game that's on PC, and I'm sure we're going to talk about them putting a, uh, uh, their version of, uh, of uh, uh, trophies on We on are going to get to that next, yes. If it's a straight line to money, I like mark my words. I'm saying it here. You may not see it on on console because that requires porting and it requires effort. But on their PCs, the, their PC offerings straight line to the bag. They yeah. are taking that bag because they don't care about your mark of success, which is a la crush the console warriors. No, they need dough, right? Until so, Kia Sante, the Epic uh -huh. Store shows up on Xbox. <laughs> which which by the way they also own a stake in so you know it, it is what it is there's a lot of wwe going on right now you know what I mean? in the back room they're going well you're going to hit me first and i'm gonna hit you second no did it you know it, it's gonna happen that way today we find ourselves in a different world right yeah we, we do so in the short term i will they nickel and dime you oh i, I don't doubt that they'll nickel and dime you but as as the Black Viking is saying, they will find interesting ways for it not to 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 to, to you know to 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 hit your mark of oh this is injustice no oh it's part of my 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 subscription or hey you know they'll find a way or Hargit saying it, they'll throw you know all the 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 microtransactions they sold you on before they'll put them all in a bundle and say see here's the new ultra special <laughs> edition and oh by the way it also gives you these frames. Extra ten, fifteen dollars. Yeah, it's yeah. Possible. It's it's. Listen, I I I don't doubt it. The, again, Sony is gonna Sony. Uh, they're gonna figure out a way to take your money from you. Uh, yeah. I I I do like the way that you broke it down with the uh, them being craven or not about it. Now that Totoki, uh, is in the room, he's running the show. He's a money guy. He is uh gonna want to uh get as much money extracted from the consumer as possible. Um, do they do uh a better job? 
don't know. I, I, I remains I have no to be confidence. seen. Yeah, it remains yeah, to be yeah. seen. Yeah, it absolutely does. Let's. Uh, I'm. In, I'm going to stick with UK. Uh, so some big news. If you are someone that have been uh, waiting for, for instance, you don't own a PlayStation Five. Um, you buy everything on PC because as a PC gamer, you well, you have everything at your fingertips. If you have a good rig, if you have a powerful rig. You're getting all the frames. You're getting all the sliders. You're getting the shaders. You're pretty much doing whatever you want uh, on a PlayStation 5 game that has been launched into the PC platform. And there's been quite a few of, of really big ones. Um, we learned today that uh, moving forward, there is going to be a trophy system layered over mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the games that are launching onto PC. And the first one that is happening for is one of the ones the most sought after by many people in this community, Ghost of Tsushima, uh, which is a game that I platinum. That game is legendary in every in every form or fashion. I absolutely loved it. Um, I don't have a PC. I don't think even if I did, I would run through it again. I enjoyed my time with it. Like I said, I did platinum it. Um, but this there besides that. You know, I, I want to bring in um, Mr. Bad Bit into the conversation. Now, Joe's not here. Um, and Joe was responding to someone that uh, is pushing a narrative that was pushed upon onto Xbox um, when uh, Xbox games went over to PC. Remember, that was a big kerfuffle, if you will. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so we keep hearing that day and date is imminent for PC and PlayStation 5 games. Uh, how soon? Well, no one really knows but Sony, but the talk of the town is it's going to be much sooner than it is going to be later. This uh, this person on, uh, again, I, I don't know if they're a troll or not, but I'm not going to give their name, says, do you think PlayStation's push onto PC devalues the PlayStation 5 console? Uh like it makes like it makes it less special to own one. And Joe Joe responds and he says PlayStation games on PC devalues the console is a bad argument to me. Do PC games that come to PlayStation 5 dev devalue Steam? No. Sony needs to adapt to the changing market. Early access on console, for example. You you got to go where the customers are, and that landscape is changing fast. Uh let's talk about it, man. And that is the reason why Bad Bit is always welcome on any of the networks that we are on. Because the tool, man brother. speaks truth. Sharp tool, yes. Right? The man, him, uh, BitCloud Gaming, they, they rep Fantastic. PlayStation proudly, but they yep. will speak truth because that exactly is truth, right? Uh, uh, and, and, and while, while you, were, you were setting up the story, I was grabbing the credit card because it's time to pay for Ghost of Tsushima, which I am glad to repay. And, re and replay that game because, like you, to me, me that game is oh, yeah, it's it just kiss in every in every aspect. Amazing. That's my amazing. favorite PlayStation like, game from like the last ten bar years none. Ago. I yeah. honestly, Viking, I, like people are like, oh, God of War. I like God of War. Spider Man. I like Ghost of Tsushima. Is their whole cloth newly yes. invented IP that is it blows them all away in my yes. humble opinion like yep. it is mm -hmm. just so good like freaking as soon as that game came out ubisoft just needed to bow their heads and just walk off the room because they just <laughs> out ubisoft everything but that's okay hey, before before you go forward would it, be, would it be all right if i just catch up on super chats uh, oh yeah, yeah yeah please yeah. please, please so, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, uh, please. the first one of the day came to us of adidas 20 zero generous friend of the program drops an outstanding five dollar super chat and he says i'm here he was one of the first ones in there so Adidas twenty zero brother, thanks so much for the generosity. J Mac G B O G drops a very generous five dollar super chat, and he says, "Shout out to the Avengers at Kaysante Boomstick Hargeet and Chani Black Viking World New Xbox New World Order is fully operational. Indeed, it is there. J Mac R C Polygons, another generous friend of the program, drops a very outstanding five dollar super chat." He says, I hope Sony pushes everyone to $100 games. Make Activision sell Call of Duty for $100 so Game Pass looks even better. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's not wrong for sure. Uh, Jonas the Dad drops a very generous $2 super chat. But before that, he has been a channel member, ladies and gentlemen, for six months. So, Jonas, thank you for the support. He says, 
the regular P Diddy station says 120 frames 8K on the box. Is that not <laughs> false advertising? Class action level. Hit that like button, boom and crew crushing it. Thank you, brother. Super appreciate that. That's like that's <laughs> like Diddy saying, You want to go shopping? <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Hook, line, and sinker, baby. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. The slander is out. Damn. Oh, ouch. Um, he drops an additional $2 super chat and says, haven't talked about that Chinese WoW money. We actually mentioned mm-hmm. it yesterday on um, the Xbox Factor podcast on the back end of the show where they had uh, over 2 million pre-registered users in two days uh, for WoW, and it's probably tripled or even quadrupled by, by now. It's going to be big. Uh, Blizzard games going back into China are going to be a really freaking big deal. And like we said during that conversation, uh, with me, Louie, and Infinite Umbra, when you factor in a new handheld, which is the market in that re- uh, Asian region, it's Microsoft is cooking. They're cooking, folks. I'm here to tell you. Uh, we have Pip Boy, or no, I'll say Pip Boy, Pip N06. Drops a very generous five pound super chat. And Pip, thanks so much for being here and thank you for the generosity. He goes on to say, How will PlayStation make Call of Duty have a super version? Will they get their mates at the FTC to help? <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> I don't know, man. That's that's interesting. I wonder that's funny. Um, nerds and other legends drops a very generous five dollar super chat and says. Great panel, Boom. The conversations are always great. Enjoy your uh, evening, everyone, brother. Thank you so much for the very kind words. And, of course, thank you so much for the generosity. And Leonard Herrera, generous friend of the program. He has been supporting the channel through channel membership for 25 months. Dude, oh. that is crazy nice. We super appreciate it. He goes on to say, grateful for this stacked panel. Respect to each of you and respect to you, brother. And, of course, once again, thank you for the generosity. So, K. Asante, Let's continue this conversation because, okay, I think having trophies are big. There are a lot of trophy hunters out there. There are a lot of people that double dip on the games that will play on PlayStation or 4 or 5 and then go and play it again on PC so they can get all the bells and whistles. I think this is brilliant. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it took this long. That's fine. But let's, let's talk about it. So for me, it's the canary in the coal mine. That's what this is. Like uh, good point. I'm not a I'm not a I'm good not point. a trophy hunter. That's not what I am, you know. It doesn't really I'm not an achievement hunter, I'm not a trophy hunter. I enjoy the game. Uh uh actually Ghost was the only one that I almost platinum because that just that game was just so fun that eventually I clicked into my master build and I was just marking every fool I see and I was, you know, <laughs> come at me, bro. That's where I was at some point in that game. So I, I almost finished every piece of that game, even all the side side content. What I didn't do is finish Iki Island because I knew that I'd be double dipping, right? Ah, so okay. That's fair. I am, I am one of those, right? But the reason why I call this a canary in the coal mine for me is, every, we've said it multiple times, you don't have to listen to what they do. Look at what Xbox did three years ago. That's what they're doing, right? They realize the money is on PC. They'll talk about how they don't, they won't release it on PC, then they release it on PC. They say, oh, we're going to make our console players feel special. And then the day of day and date gets closer and closer and closer and closer, right? And this will be just like all of those other experiments where they will see this amazing game not hit the heights it should because they released it a year or so later. And that'll be another mark on the fact that, hey, we need to bring our window closer together. Now, why this excites me and I bought it because, first off, I'm not buying it for seventy dollars. Uh, I bought it out the door, tax and everything else is fifty two bucks, which usually that's nice. a little much for me, even because I'm, nice. I'm usually I'm usually forty dollars or less on my double dipping situation. But I love this game, so I'll I'll do that. Uh, uh, Dragon's Dogma Two was forty dollars day one. You know, PC get, gives you those options. But what what's exciting exciting for me in this is once you start releasing it on PC in a more consistent fashion, as Xbox has done. Now you're putting your achievements slash trophies on the service, as Xbox has done. You're not expecting that people will create new accounts. No, they're rolling their old accounts. The one, the PlayStation Plus accounts will then sign in to this PC to give you your achievements continue, as Xbox has done, right? 
at some point, it no longer becomes righteous and advantageous to continue to charge double dippers more. Eventually, the idea of a unified license becomes closer and closer to your eventuality because now no longer are you treating the the the, the PC market as a secondary market. You're treating them, you're treating it as a gaming market whole, wholeheartedly, which is what Xbox is doing right now. PlayStation's not there yet, but they're getting there. How do I know this? Because they're now offering trophy support on games that are not on that platform. That tells me uh, a, 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 a storefront is closely on its way. Yes. Right? It's close. And they're not cultivating new customers while well, they're trying to cultivate new customers, but they know that the old customers who love their games are also coming there with you. And you will not want to piss off your old customers because by and large, there are so many new customers that are buying your stuff when they come out day and date that that, that good PR you will get from me who gets access to the game because it's available on this and now it's there because at this point, you can't tell me that you don't know that I already own it. Guess what? You're making me sign up with my same PlayStation account in the game. So yep. you know I already own it. You know what I'm saying? These are all steps and moves that Microsoft has made. And when they made them, arrows were flying everywhere, right? The virtual tomatoes, that, if you will. The virtual yeah. tomatoes, they're wiping them off their face. <laughs> and as soon as it, it becomes old hat, guess who's following? Right? So in this instance, I am taking the arrows so that you, dear gamer, at some point will get day in, day and not have to pay extra for it. Right? Now, we, we, we just spent all this time talking about how, Microsoft, how PlayStation is cash strapped. So why would they do that? In the world where the gaming market is not just one console pool and one PC pool and it's one big pool, right? It is advantageous to do these these uh, 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 these pro consumer moves in order to open up wallets even wider, right? We hear PlayStation is cash strapped all the time. Why is Microsoft not cash strapped? Because they make a lot of these moves. That's why you'll see people who normally don't buy microtransactions buy microtransactions, right? Yep. You give me access Great to point. this awesome game day and date, maybe on Game Pass. Now I'm I, I'm likely to buy so my, I'm likely to buy some drip, even though that's not really me. I'm likely to, you know, it's it's like the 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 movie service. If I if I get my movie ticket for free, I'm okay buying popcorn. That's how they separate you from your wallet. If you insist on that seventy dollar game, seventy dollar game, seventy dollar game, they'll only buy that once, and they'll never look at your services again because it was already too much of an uplift to get in, right? Microsoft is eating on the fact that you give them 10 and then 15 and then 10 and then five. And then, and that's how they continue to eat on a daily basis. So with them, Sony putting these, uh, putting trophies on there, that is telling me they are walking that same path and eventually they will get to where Microsoft is today. And that makes me super happy. So to me, kudos, kudos to, to, to Sony for taking that step. I want to see what their marketplace looks like. I want to see what their launches look like. I want them to go there. I want them to release these amazing games day and date across the board. Let them do it, right? Because then they won't be so cash strapped anymore. And when you're there day and date, you could command 70 bucks and you'll get more people to pay for it, right? You give it to me a year later and you say $70, I'll go, ha, 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 deals.gg. That's yeah, what I'll do. Great point. But if it's, a, if it's an amazing game and it's available everywhere day and date, I am more likely to pay that cost day one, right? So again, I think this is all about the adults in the room understanding, looking over at their counterparts and going, how is it that they keep quietly like out, outshining us as far as profit? This is how they're doing it. Okay, well, let's start walking in those, in those steps. And that's what it looks like they're doing here. I am happy about it. Let me ask you, uh, before we go well, bring in Hargeet, answer the question though. Does day and date on PC devalue mm -hmm. the PlayStation? It's like saying, does watching a movie on Netflix devalue the movie going experience? There you does, go. you know what I'm saying? Yep. Like it, 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 it does devalue the console experience. If you're a man, baby, who only thinks that yours is the special snowflake, <laughs> you know, I'm sorry. Like, forgive no, me, it's, it's, you know. <laughs> Uh, you know, no one can have it. My my TV must come with an exclusive movie. Like, I'm sorry. You enjoy playing it where you enjoy playing, and Indeed. it will never be taken away from you, right? Yep. And oh, by the way, when it's available in those other places, they will get funds to make a new version of that thing that you love playing. 
So why are you complaining? Yeah, well, listen, great, great way to close out that particular uh, question. And again, I, 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 I'm right there with you. I think that what, why does, why would you care if, 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 like, for instance, here's a perfect example of what Kay is saying. I know that Hellblade Two is going to be locked at thirty. I'm going to play it mm -hmm. on my Series X. I got a tip of the spear TV, and I am good. Now, people are going to play it on, on, on a lot of people are going to be, well, I'm boom, I'm going to play it on PC because I have a rig. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. I'm a congratulator, not a hater. So if that's how you want to play, good on you. It's your choice. Absolutely. Indeed. I, I, again, I, I think Joe. And was, this is why I always say hashtag boom gets a PC. He gets it. He get, yeah. It's his choice. Yep. That's Absolutely. it. Uh, Hargi Chani, let, let's bring you in on this conversation because obviously this is a this is a this is a two tiered convo, right? Yeah. Obviously the 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 back end is you know the, the the valuing of the PlayStation. I think that's ridiculous. I think if you want a PlayStation, you're going to buy a PlayStation and enjoy the shit out of it because that's what you want. If you want a PC, go build yourself a five thousand dollar rig and get every bell and whistle. And because you want to do that. Go ahead. Also, a part of this is the fact that we're seeing this layover that's coming the way of Ghost of Tsushima, the first game that's going to introduce trophies. Uh, I think day and date is around the corner. Uh, now, let me be clear. When I say around the corner, I don't mean this fall. And we know that, Kargit, because Sony told us so. They don't have a first party game until minimum of March. 2025 if i were a betting kind of a guy and i really don't like to gamble folks because i like my money i would say that whatever that game is in 2025 in march is going to be the first do launch and it's going to open up the floodgates and as it should what are your thoughts man yeah and look i think the next few games they have are going to be multiplayer anyway so those games are already going to be multi-plat they're going to go day and date pc yep. anyway so if you're looking at maybe Concord comes out, maybe that comes out this year, maybe it comes out next year, Fair Games or something like that. Marathon, we know, is going to be everywhere, right? Um, so, you know, and MLB The Show, that's a multi-plat, right? So, like, what is their next game? I'm guessing Wolverine. I'm guessing that's the next game. No, sorry, uh, Venom. Venom is going to be the next game. That might be fall next year, right? If it's fall next year, is that going to be uh, day and date? It's a possibility. We don't know at this point, but it is a possibility that it, it's either like day and date or very, very close, like in, in within a few months uh, that it comes to PC. And they're eventually going to get to the point of saying it doesn't matter. Let's just release it day and date and see what happens, right? Uh, you're going to have to hit something. That's a good one to do it with, right? Because you've already sold Spider-Man 2 already. So this is a, a, a you know, a, a Miles Morales on top of that. You know, let's take the hit and see what happens. Let's say, like, like is this going to be a, a good amount like Hell Divers 2, or is this going to be a nothing? And we basically sold all of it on, on PlayStation, right? If we get that data back, or they get that data back, you know, we could see what that means to them as far as sales of games. And if it's significant, it's like 30%, 40% bump if they did that day and date versus, say, a 15% bump or 20% bump. Hey, you got something there. That's 10, 15% extra that you sold just because you did day and date, right? And th then they can just take that and, and say, all right, well, would that make sense to just make that money or not, right? Did we have a perceptible like hit, right? As far as the sales were lower than we expected on PlayStation. I don't think that's going to be the case. So I think it's a good uh, you know, uh, test to do with, with uh, Venom to say, let's see what happens if we do a stay and date. There's going to be... A community uproar with the you know hundred people who care, and then the rest of them don't give a crap, right? They're just gonna like just go get the game on whatever platform they want to play it on, and you know they'll see what it en ends up meaning, right? So uh, just like it happened here, by the way, on Xbox, there were you know a, a number of people who are pro Xbox, I won't mention names, who went you know crazy and said, "What? Why did you put this on Dan Dan and PC?" Well, I mean, like if you haven't followed this, the entire purpose of this was to take Windows and put it in the freaking living room. It was yes. always going to be the case that it was yep. going to go day and day PC. That was always the plan, 
right? So for Microsoft to do what they promised to do in the beginning was just something they finally did. <laughs> they were supposed to do that anyway, right? So that wasn't something that should have been surprising. They did what they were supposed to do anyway, right? So fair enough. It's now PlayStation's turn to, to try to see if they can get enough revenue from it. And again, why not? It's it's a large market. The majority of the new generations are moving towards PC. Take advantage. Go go get those players, right? Acquire new customers. That's what you want to do. So like, go, go do that. And doing it day and date gives you the enthusiasm right at the, the launch, right? For those players to say, oh, cool. This just came out. Let me go play it. Oh, I can't play it where I want to play. Oh, well, okay. And then they forget about it, right? Instead, it's like, oh, I can go buy it right now on Steam. Let me go play it, right? Get the bump, get the sales bump, right? And they'll see what they get out of that. The trophies thing is cool. Like there's obviously things that already kind of do all these things in the background, but but whatever, let, let, they're going to do this official. You can do trophy thing, you know, directly by logging into your account and you can get trophies. You can get the Steam achievements. Cool. Right. I, I think that's a cool thing to do as far as like if it's a Microsoft game, you get your Microsoft achievements. And if you're on Steam, you get the Steam achievements, Epic achievements, whatever it is. Right. Cool. Those are nice things to do. I don't think it's the end of the world, but cool if people like that kind of thing. Um, but as far as like, you know, them doing day and date, I would I mean, if it's me looking at it, Hiroki Totoki is the one doing this. He's got to look at the financials and say Helldivers proves that putting it in day and date. Yes, is a good idea. It's just yep. a good idea. It gave them such a bump. It gave them so much more um, community-driven growth that it was just worth it. And if you decide to say, hey, I'm going to put my marketing dollars in when I'm launching this game, and it happens to be on both platforms, and it gets me that bump for uh, you know new customers that I can acquire because they normally are not on my PlayStation, do it. Like You don't have to lock yourself anymore. You're already bringing it to the other platform. Just put it there and get the you know the bump of customers. It just makes sense. So uh, you know I would suggest they do it. But look, we know that the next few games they release, they're going to be day and date PC anyway. They're all these multiplayer games, so that's going to be the pattern. And you're just going to keep getting reinforced that every time you do this, it turns out oh, putting it on PC was a good idea. It bumped your number of players. It was a good plan to to keep your your game running. Unlike say. Destruction All Stars or whatever—I think that was the game, right? That failed miserably. Maybe if you had put it on more platforms, it might have—it might have saved it, right? But you didn't, right? So maybe this is the path you should take, and your games might sustain themselves better, especially since you don't put them in a subservice uh, day and date, right? So hey, why not, right? Let's get those day and dates going. Uh, Venom's a, a, a low. Uh, hit as far as a game because you're not you've already spent the majority of the money already because of spider-man 2 take take that one as a chance and see hey does does it work can can we do day and date do we get enough of an incremental bump is it worth doing day and date and see what you get right it, it just kind of makes sense it aligns it's a good potential uh, game to do it with so why not G give it a shot right um uh, if they can do that and it works out then we'll see what happens next, right? By then, I assume they'll also have a new CEO. I don't know when that happens, but supposedly within a year, we're supposed to have a new CEO uh, for for PlayStation. And then we'll see what happens from there. But that would be my guess. Uh, it's a great test to do Venom that way. Up to then, yeah, all these games that are coming out are basically going to be day and day PC anyway. Uh, there might be an Astro game with PS5 Pro. There might be. That'd be, be kind of an obvious like thing to do, right? To have a, a demo game for your PS5 Pro. Uh, I'd assume that may not be day and date, but again, it's really just a demo game like the last one was. So uh, that one will probably just stay on PS5. Uh, but yeah, outside of that, I think, yeah, this is a good idea. Test it out. See what you get. Small game like Venom. Great test, right? To see what it does. Uh, you don't have to go crazy and and like uh, take one of your your next big games, right? But at least take this. You've already paid for it. You've already gotten your revenue for most of it. I assume they've got the sales so far. If they haven't, they'll get there hopefully soon enough to make that money back. Uh, so why not give it a shot? See what you get. That's a good potential pl uh, play to see if you can get that day and date. I think eventually they're going to be there. There's really just no choice. I think they're eventually going to have to be there. Uh, the idea that it devalues the console. Okay, now this is just one of those oddities that exist because of the world we live in, where console was the way to get into gaming uh, for some of these, you know, worlds, right? Whereas, you know, we had PC for a long time. 
but somehow they were like di- like a, a totally different uh, uh, world as far as what games were being played where. And I, that's gone, right? The, these consoles are PCs. And so the games are all over the place. They're the same games. I just don't see why this is now an issue. Like if when I talk to people like you, Boom, right? I live on console because I want the convenience. A lot of people are like that. Yep, that's there's me. In a, that's basically that. me in a nutshell. I just want to press there's, the power there's nothing wrong with and that. play. That's right. it. Yeah. Right. And and so if that's your world, cool. If you've got a, a kid, you don't want them on a PC because there's way too much potential for them to get in trouble. Yep. You want a console experience that's locked down. Okay. Cool. Here's a device for you. Right. That's a way to go. Right. And and there's nothing wrong with that. Right. And that that world still exists. This again, it's that the hundred people who care that that will say, "Oh my God, my console lost value." Did it though? Can you play the games? You can. Yeah. Like, is, is it really going to change much? Uh, no. Um, I think it's more interesting if like Mario showed up on PlayStation. That's much more interesting, right? That that would be an interesting switch, right? But pun intended. Ah, uh, I see what you did <laughs> but but outside of that, I just, I just don't like. Why does it matter if it's on PC, right? So it's a different crowd, and you know, you're you're in this case, you're already doing it, right? It's not like PlayStation is just for the first time putting games on PC. No, all their games are on PC now. They've decided to do this. A they're they're doing them. it already. Yeah. Now it's just a question of timing, and to me, that look, you know, Gaz as part of Game on Daily has the opposite yep. view. It's like, no, no, I like them, you know, having a, a delay and that way there's a reason to have the console. That's cool for console wariness because he's in that hundred people who loves to console war. I yeah, like I saw, to play games. I saw his tweet today. <laughs> and, yeah, I, I saw his tweet. So, <laughs> so I have the different view like, and I'm sure Asa has the same view. It's like, where do I play my game? I just want to play my game. Is it in VR? Uh, you know, it's like, yeah, it, it just doesn't Asa. matter. Yeah. Right? It, I like ultimately, you know, if the company is making enough money to to make the next game, fantastic. If if oh. if people are being able to play the game where they want to play it, fantastic. What's the issue, right? They're not like supporting their competitor. They're just saying I'm putting it on PC, which I'm already doing, and I'll do it at the same time, and that way I gain both customers at the same time. To me, that just seems great. Like you said with Hellblade, I'm going to do it on both. I'm going to play it on both. I'm going to see what it does on the Series X. I have it. And then I'm going to just switch over to PC and see what, is, what does it look like here, right? I have both options at the same time. And my save will probably be on the same, you know, like I can cross save, game cross pass, progression. Right? right? It's on. so good. I don't have to worry about that. Cool entitlement. Mm-hmm. Exactly, cool right? Entitlement. So I can play it there and say, oh, this is how it looks here. It's how it flows. This is how the gameplay w- works. Okay, cool. Now let me try it on my 4090. Cool. This is how it looks here. Is it, okay, I'll just choose this one or that one. Whatever, right? But I get to see what it's like on both, right? And that's a beautiful thing. I get to play it everywhere and see what it's like, what, what it's like, and choose what I want to play, right? I still majority play on console because it's convenient. I just like it. It's convenient. That's it, yeah. right? I totally know PCs in and out. That's fine. But again, I just like the convenience. I just turn on my console and play my game. So, like, fine. I don't think it devalues the console at all. The console gives you something that the PC doesn't, which is that convenience. Now, if Microsoft manages to make it where the pc is like the console oh boy is that going to change things <laughs> so gonna change we'll see a what lot they do with the next gen right yeah. <laughs> if they can manage to make windows 12 have like a console mode wow <laughs> that is going to change things massively but we will see we will see if they go down that path or not mm-hmm. um but that so that's what so to me no it does not change the value of the console uh you know xbox was never going to sell 400 million consoles right they still ended up selling near 60 million. Was it 58, something like that? Xbox Ones, right? Yeah. That was about their target. That was what they were going to get, right? The, the best they've done is the 360, which was 80 something million, something like that. 86, right? or 87, they were, something like that. Yeah, yeah, they were like neck and neck with uh, with PS3, right? Like they were pretty much within like a, a couple of percent of each other. Um, so that was really good. They both were right there. And then uh, PS4, they went to 117, and Xbox was like half of that, right? So that was kind of where that went, even though they decided, hey, we're going to put our games on PC. It didn't you know, really change their sales trajectory. It just changed who could play their games when. And so I don't see that changing here either. I mean, so I would be surprised to see the PS5 suddenly says, oh, instead of selling, you know, 
15 million consoles this year or 12 million consoles, we sold three. I don't think that's going to happen. I think no. they're still going to sell their consoles. Yep. So they're still going to get to their levels. They're still going to, it may not be like a hundred percent their target. Maybe it'd be a little less, but it'll be the same thing. It, it's not going to be that different, right? They're gonna Unless sell there's software and pressure. that's going to make them the money hargeet. You yeah. Know, and, and that's, that's the, that's the ticker right there. Yeah. The big headache they have is attracting customers based on games, right? Since mm -hmm. they don't have anything this fall, what are they going to do, right? right? So they can't market Call of Duty anymore. That used to be their big draw. They don't have that anymore. What are they going to do? They don't have a God of War. They don't have a Horizon. They don't have anything else. That could be a hit on their sales just because they don't have that. Flip side, the other platform happens to have Call of Duty and will be marketing the heck out of it. Um, that could flip the sales numbers there. But again, that if, if that was a console problem, well, Xbox has put, put their games on PC ever since like, what was it? 2017, 16, whatever it was, when they made that decision. So, so Arky, <laughs> I have a, a bit of an epiphany that I want your, your thoughts on. That just came to mind while you, you were having this, you were explaining the truth to people. It's the show of epiphanies. I love it. It really <laughs> is. It really is. The, the, I was just thinking about it. I'm just like, no, Hey down. Yeah. So, we already know that, that that it's a loss leader in the console space. It's always been a loss leader, right? Yeah, and that's the in reason general. why Microsoft, in general, well, yeah, yeah, don't don't talk about the the low performing console. Leave the, the abacus Nintendo, out of this yeah. whole situation. The abacus. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but by and large, the consoles that push the envelope are loss leaders, right? And because of that, you now have Microsoft kind of uh, making overtures to where they want to live in a world where that loss leader is not part of it. They just want to focus on the software, right? In the world, and you just mentioned this, in the world where Microsoft then threads that needle and makes console-like performance or console-like uh, experience close enough to, 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 to consoles or PC performance close enough to consoles to, to the point where Boom now goes, hey, now, maybe I might jump in, right? Does that not also work in Sony's favor? Because then it's a lost leader for them as well. Now they don't have to worry about R&D and all of that. They can just sell their wares, which by and large is better than most people's wares, right? Because they make those bangers. And now all you got to do is focus on your bangers. And these guys have got you covered. No R&D necessary anyway. Am I wrong in that? Yeah. So there's a couple of things to think about there, right? Like long term, that has always been the thing, right? I've been kind of mm -hmm. saying this in a, a decade or two, it's going to be tough to sell a console when your TV can just run the game when your, yes. your your computer is going to be a general purpose device that just easily runs the game. It has a mm. console mode and it just does it, right? There's going to be, and, and a lot of players are moving to mobile, to a PC, right? That is kind of the general trend. And our devices are getting so powerful. Now you have games, AAA games being released directly on phones, right? That is going to keep happening. Oh, we got the slanderous one. Nah. So I think we, we're going to have <laughs> that happen. PC anyway right so as far as that device under your tv it's yeah. going to become less relevant at some point i don't know when that is whether it's mm. five years 10 years 15 years 20 years 25 years 30 years i don't know but at some point it will become it was less last relevant. thursday Harky. it was last <laughs> thursday we'll talk about that later yeah. Everborn Council Betrayer Saga. Continue. I'm sorry. Go right. ahead. <laughs> uh, just because of the natural progression of power within devices, right? They keep getting more and more powerful. And at some point, you just get to the, you know, to the point of, of, of like, this is just good enough. I don't need it to look or play better than this, right? At some mm -hmm. point, we'll say, hey, it's got, you know, 4K, uh, 240 frames with path tracing and all these particle effects and everything. And Dude, I just don't care after this. I don't need anything more than this. It's good enough, right? So whenever it gets to that point, which we're not that far off from, I uh, will just get to the point of saying I don't need an upgrade. So my like my TV processor that can just do all that in 20 right. years is good enough. I just don't care. It just deliver me the game here. I'll plug in a memory card that the game can store itself on and and I can play it and, and I get a controller and I'm good to go, right? So at some point, that's going to happen. As far as Sony, this is an interesting one, right? Sony is a company that's based on, on consumer electronics, right? Yep. So yep. Is, is their modus operandi, because they do this now, content or is it 
electronics because they do content. They have movie, yes. they have music, right? Right. It has yeah. nothing to do with the the hardware necessarily, but they do sell you a TV. They do sell True. you, uh, you know, uh, 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 music players. They do sell you mm -hmm. audio systems. They do sell you mm -hmm. headphones. So they do potentially tangentially still do consumer electronics based yeah. on those areas. But what in would they do those in those areas world? though? They don't subsidize the cost to you. You buy your TV for two K, it's yours. Uh, right? Exactly, and, and they charge. And I don't you a think premium. they'll subsidize. <laughs> yes, I don't think they'll sub. They'll continue subsidizing a console if they can just put it on your TV. And that's the question mark, right? Is yeah. will there be a need for them to keep doing this? And at what point would it just be worthless to them, right? So it might be more beneficial for them to follow suit with what Microsoft is doing and instead create an ecosystem, right? Steam, for instance, is an ecosystem. It has its yeah. own, you know, big big picture mode. It has its own launcher. It has its own uh, way to uh, uh, publish games. It has its own store, et cetera, et cetera, right? So it's its own ecosystem. You get achievements on there, all that, right? Equivalently, they could do something like that and say, well, we have our own ecosystem. It's the PlayStation Network, and you can access that wherever you want. I don't care if you're on a phone. I don't care if you're on a TV. I don't care if you're on uh, you know, a, a PC or a Mac. You, you can just go ahead and access our stuff, right? Okay, fair enough. That might be a path that they decide to go to. If they decide to go down that path, which they probably will end up having to do anyways, then yeah, it doesn't make sense to keep making a box. I don't know how far out that is, though. That's the, the mm. question, right? There might might be a good uh, another 10, 15 years of console uh, market that makes sense. It may fizzle after that, right? And we'll just, we'll have to see. We'll, we'll probably witness it, right? When it's like, what are these console things anymore? Let's just get out of that stupid mode. And we'll, you know, I just buy my controller that I like. Hey, and record I just, players you know, still exist. <laughs> they still exist. They do. still buy one. Yeah. Record players, you, you, they still exist, you know? It is yeah, vinyl that's, came back in a big way as well. Uh, so yes. you can play on those record players. And, and that's, that's fair. It's a, a question of how do you get that library, right? Vinyls were a standard, I, and, and they could play on any vinyl player, not on this specific device yep. right, right. that had the Good cartridge point. slot. Right. That, so those are the headaches you run into with this. Thankfully, these are PCs, right? So you could potentially emulate any of it anywhere you want, right? So if that catalog is viable on anything, it can be done, right? So these are interesting times. We will see where it ends up going. But, you know, I like where Microsoft is going as far as the, and they, and like you're saying, Sony's always a few years behind. They're going to do the same bloody thing. But we just got the news that they're looking at a forwards and backwards compatibility team at Microsoft, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And yep. people might gloss over the forwards mm, and that's backwards, important part. Not, just, not just backwards, but yeah. forwards compatibility, mm -hmm. right? That is something to take that into account, right? What happens if I start moving platform to platform? What happens? That's something that Sony's going to have to look at at some point, right? Because this is going to happen. Whether we like it or not, it's going to happen. We're going to get to a point where people are going to jump to whatever platform they're used to. Kids play on tablets. Why? Because that's what's available to them. They get they get a tablet from their parents, and they, they just play with touch controls, and that's what they play with. And then they're used to that, right? They don't really necessarily jump to console. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't, right? But if everything becomes that in PC you have to kind of go where the customer is and that's what's going to end up happening. Hey, man, I, I keep throwing play. console controllers at my, my kids. They do not care. They just nope. want to touch the they damn screen. Right? Like, ah. no. They want to play, and, and, play on a tablet. Yeah. And, and as we've been saying, like there's AR, there's VR. We don't know where that ends up, right? If AR mm -hmm. takes off, that could be the platform of the future, right? We don't know. We we just don't know what happens next, right? There's always tech improvements, always tech, gen, you know, uh, evolutions, what we get next, we don't know, right? So we'll we'll see what the next revolutionary thing is that that changes the way we game. Uh, but something might happen, right? It may not, but it may. And if it does, then we'll have something totally different, <laughs> and right. So you just have to keep things open and see where things go. I, so yes, I, I think there is the 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 potential for PlayStation to decide we can pull back on the hardware if there's no point to making it, right? If they can make enough of them and make money off of their store, fair enough. If they can alternatively just say, we we are a Steam competitor on PC, right? Or here's a better option if they can work it. Go to Apple and say, why don't we make a PlayStation store on Mac and we can bring all on the, the Apple TV. PlayStation yes. games, 
right onto the Mac, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And you know, become one of the big stores for games on that platform, right? Is that a viable thing? Uh, and you might say that's crazy. Well, think of it this way: both of them are based on BSD. So yeah. is it really that far off, right? So Darwin was a fork off of BSD, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, so is PlayStation. It's a BSD based OS. Is it really that far off to, to say you can make that OS work with the little customizations that might be needed? It's not really. It, it actually has some, some potential viability. So you could say, all right, let's see if that's a viable option for PlayStation, same OS, to just work with Mac and say we're the store for Apple, uh, you know, for, for big AAA games. It's a viable thing, right? Now, Apple may not like it, but it also gives them some like shielding as far as the regulators of the world saying, hey, you've locked every freaking place you're at with your own store. Why don't you have other stores? Right now you have a big competitor on your, you know, well, competitor, a, a, a partner uh, store on your platform. Right. So plenty of myriads of options out there. Right. Is it viable that PlayStation stops making consoles? it's probably going to happen at some point. It's just a question of when, right? Yeah. The last company to do it is going to be Nintendo. They're going to keep Nintendoing for ever until Nintendo uh, players decide, no, you got to put it somewhere else. If they don't reward them, they, they'll keep doing it. <laughs> it's, it's up to them, right? It's up to the customer to say, I'm not going to buy it again. But unfortunately, us Nintendo players will buy it again. <laughs> well, I mean, listen, uh, Cargi, <laughs> you're, you're, you're absolutely killing it because I think you bring a lot of good points. And I think there are going to be some big changes uh, for PlayStation that a lot of their diehard or the, the, the 100 or 200, you said, the, the loudest in the community are just not going to like. Uh, Viking, I, I do want to bring you in on the conversation. Do, do you think that uh, a PlayStation console has become, quote unquote, devalued? based on the fact that we are on the cusp and I'm again not this year because yeah. there's no game to drop uh on on the PS5 as well uh, at the same time as a uh, PC unless it's Concord. Now, I th I don't think it's Concord because they wouldn't have said there are no first party games coming out uh yeah. for 2020, 2025. Where where do you kind of sit with that uh well, the, the devaluing? I I don't think it devalues the console. I think what it does it could potentially, but I think what it does, it devalues the online conversation of the console uh, in general. Um, and what I mean by that is even a high level C-suite executive <laughs> had <laughs> in his profile, what did he buy PlayStation? What does he play PlayStation for? Exclusives. Yep. The, that's the online conversation around most people on Twitter is like, I have a PlayStation for exclusives. Now you drop that day and date, that argument evaporated. Like that whole thing right there is gone. It doesn't devalue your box. Casual players don't give a shit. Their, yeah, their, box, their oh. box is their box and they're continue to play Fortnite, Call of Duty uh, for, you know, FIFA and all that, right? But uh, it does de it does get rid of that that perception that the reason why I have a PlayStation five is for uh, exclusives. And then, you know, cause like, what do people say? Well, just, you know, just get a, a PC, like, so you can play Xbox games, right? Like that's, that's what the conversation has been over the past like year is like, why do I need an Xbox when I can just buy a PC? And now everybody's gonna be like, why do I need a PlayStation to buy? And this is just the online. This is two percent of yeah. all the gamers. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like it stops everybody, like it stops, you know, Mike Yabara from putting that into his <laughs> into his uh Twitter Twitter uh profile or whatever. So no, I don't think it devalues the console at all. I think what it does, it just devalues the perception of what playstation is we're, we're heading into publisher wars is what we're going into instead of console yep. wars now yeah. so <laughs> yeah so it's not going to be about that and then like what's crazy is like the new generation you know once those games do start going day and day on pc which i think is going to start with venom because i think by beginning of next year we'll have that spider-man 2 port if you already haven't played the 
the elite Brazilian edition already. <laughs> hey, Brazil be going crazy with uh, <laughs> they be going crazy. Um, and then like months later, you know, April, March, I mean, April time frame, May time frame, Venom will drop, and that'll be a perfect time to do. Uh, I agree. Day yeah. and date is with, is with Venom. Um, or they could just wait until that time frame to bundle them together spider-man 2 and venom and that's the only way you can get it on pc and then pc players pay you know a hundred dollars for the bundle versus it being separated so who knows how they do it but is day and dates happening next year you yeah, know I, okay yeah. so i'm saying <laughs> he said nah <laughs> i ain't dipping for a hundred dollars get out of no, here with you, won't, you won't you won't you <laughs> won't i mean it, well there are definitely um, places you go and get it cheaper uh, yeah about for that. sure uh, yeah but uh, I mean, um, listen. I, I I think uh, everyone had has completely knocked it out of the park. I, I and I agree. Shout out to uh, Mr. Bad Bit over at the Trophy Room, who answered uh, this particular person that said that uh, they're you know they're they're asking, and I think they were being very facetious about it, whether or not it devalues. I, I think what it devalues is console wars. Uh, yep. That's what it's going to ultimately devalue. Yep. Uh, because, like for instance, I put myself on the stand your honor it's not a problem i understand that if i had a very expensive rig let's say for instance i spent three thousand dollars and i got up I'm, I'm rocking a 4090 i got all the bells and whistles i know that i'm going to experience hellblade at 60 frames and i know that it's going to be played the best there but see for me being a simpleton uh, i don't care uh, i i'm a console guy i have always been a console guy it's fine. I'm going to get my lock 30. I have a Series X. I went out and bought a very expensive TV, tip of the spear. I've never owned one until last year. I've always had mid-range TVs. This one has everything. And I'm going to enjoy the shit out of that game at 30 frames. But I know that if I wanted to, I could go out and get a PC. I don't want to. I don't care. And I think there are a lot of casuals that are not going to care there are a lot of casuals, I think, gentlemen, that are not even going to know that a game was launched on PC. Where are you playing it? I'm playing it on my PS5. Okay, th that's all they care about because yeah. that's what they own. That's they what they care. enjoy. And the PlayStation 5, just like the PlayStation 4, is a casual box. That's what it is. It's for the casuals, for the, nor the normies of the world. Um, but look, we do have Everborn Saga He's here to gloat, folks. Let's let's let him have the floor before we get the outros. Get some catch up on some super chats. Uh, Mister Everborn Saga, PCMR. Uh, how you doing, kind sir? <laughs> uh, uh, I am a console experience gamer forever, sir. <laughs> uh, I, there's there's a thing we're gonna talk about it this weekend on GCP. I just uh, um, I was I had to take my sister to the airport and I had just got back and you guys were having a great conversation. So I said, let me hop in here um, just to answer the question about devaluing the the PlayStation. I mean, if you are playing on PlayStation and you're a PS5 owner, it devalues nothing for you. Yes. Right. 100%. Yep. Now, me as someone who and again we'll talk about it and folks so so that you know what uh boom is referring to i recently uh set up a 4090 rig but the whole experiment is to use it as a console meaning i'm using tools like mu deck to turn off the window shell so i never see it uh, the 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 pc itself launches when you uh, press the controller and it turns on the TV. I'm, I'm still working out getting that working. Um, it launches into big picture mode. So where you only need a controller, you set big picture mode to integrate with the Xbox controller. So when you get the guide button, you get the, um, the overlay to go to settings and turn off and reset the PC. So you actually never use the keyboard and the mouse and you never see the desktop and you're in a controller friendly UI, except you're running everything at 4K 60, 4K 120. Yep. Right. And yep. so, um, and I miss nothing in terms of my, my Xbox stuff because guess what? 
all the Xbox games a day and date on PC. Mm-hmm. Yep. And Correct. I say all this to say the PlayStation 5 is absolutely devalued for me because once I put this piece... Oh, by the way, this is the other thing I didn't tell you guys. This PC is not in the office. I'm allergic to gaming on it at a desk. Yes. With, like, on, I, sit in my, I sit in my home office all day. The, the, the last thing I want to be is in my office for one minute after I log out of work. So... Uh, this is connected to the 55 inch OLED in the bedroom. Nice. Very nice. And I only use it with a controller. There's nothing installed on this PC. And so um, I am playing my Game Pass games. I'm playing my Steam library. And guess what? The Steam stuff automatically syncs with the Steam Deck. And I'm playing right there. Or the Xbox stuff is automatically syncing with the ROG Ally. Now, I'm not saying everyone goes out and does this, but that people who are afraid to go to the PC, it there are several things that have happened to where we've had this convergence, right? And and I'm not going to be long winded here, but I want you to think about this. When the PS4 and the and the Xbox One went to 80 x86, that was thing number one. Yep. Right. Understand. Then we saw we started to see every major third party publisher saying they have to publish on PC. We've now seen Capcom say their number one platform is PC. Right. We've seen all these. Uh, we've seen Sega do it. We've seen these other people say they're all publishing on PC. So what you know today is that every major third party game is guaranteed to come to PC, right? That's a fact. It, that wasn't always the case in the 360 gen, in the, in the PS3 gen. But today, you know every game that comes out, even if it's some timed exclusivity thing on, on Xbox or PlayStation, it's coming to PC if it's third party. Now, we know all the Xbox games come there day and date so now an x86 is what allows this so thing two happens which i I don't think a lot of people have caught up to and that maybe they will if what hargeet said comes to pass with windows 12 thing two is um all these pc games all obviously have control support but the steam deck comes out and the steam deck provides a console experience if you've ever used it even though you're playing these PC games. Steam has now brought that, and this is not in beta anymore. It used to be in beta. Steam has brought the Steam Deck UI to Windows, and that's what I'm using, right? Nice. And so me, as a console troglodyte, I am using the 4090 with all the bells and whistles, and I'm playing these games at all the stuff that people are arguing about. And once you get to that state, you start to look at all of the X arguments that happen, and you're just like, "What are you, what are you clouds talking about?" Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> and so, and so, I actually have never played Ghost of Tsushima, uh, and it was well, on my I'm, list. I'm jealous. Uh, you got I'm it. actually jealous do, now. Man, do you oh, man. know? Do you know where I'm not gonna buy that? <laughs> on, on the PS5. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. Like. And, and, and so I, I, I say all this to say um, the other thing that we need to consider is we've seen all these things through court cases and leaks and financial whatevers. You can make all the money and all the revenue in the world. That means nothing if you're not uh, making these profits. So we see the ga- the console part of the gaming industry growing in terms of revenue, but everyone is panicking in terms of their take-home money, right? The profit, right? It's not just PlayStation either. Xbox is having to make changes because of the same thing because now they have to not only account for all of their XGS uh, employees and all of the ZeniMax employees. They got to account for ABK employees too. Those things cost money. They make changes. That's fine, right? It, It is business, right? But what I'm saying is we are moving to a world where... 60% 60% or more of the time spent playing games are by like four or five games. Yeah, I agree. Right? And so 
these major games are becoming platforms in and of themselves. Minecraft is a platform in and of itself. Yeah. COD is a platform in and of itself. GTA is a platform out of its, in and of itself. So is Fortnite. And so what we are also seeing from a regulatory perspective around the world with different ecosystems, closed ecosystems are have are, are becoming to they're going out of fashion with regulators. I'm not saying they have no place, but if we came to a world where Epic and Take Two with these big platform games, these big forever games, if Epic and Take Two and obviously we know Microsoft owns Activision or whatever, but if they go and say, hey, we're going to make our own store because regulators say you can't take 30% of everything on your ecosystem anymore. Because mm -hmm. we see that they're, right now they're doing that to Apple and Google, and I know consoles are a different thing, but I don't know that regulators are smart enough to make that, uh, what do you call it, right? And so if, if, um, if these major games that, that are responsible for most of the revenue in these stores... Um, again, start to do things on their own, what does that leave for that that closed ecosystem store model, right? Oh, it's and, a, that's a good point. And, and, and so if we get to that place, it's going to behoove everyone to put their things everywhere. And Sony, unlike the other major publishers, is really just now dipping their toes into this, well, this why we uh, said service game this thing. Right. Yeah. This this is why we said that they're they're behind. But listen. Uh... Um. And, and and I'll finish up. I'll finish up here. Boom. I'm sorry. Okay. So I say this this convergence of things that are happening in the PC space, and I didn't even get to what's going on with ARM and uh, x86 emulation for gaming, but we can talk about that for another day. All these things are happening right now. We see where the growth is, and I I don't ever plan on dying, but maybe one day I'll get carpal tunnel. All of us here, graybeards, are not going to be gaming forever, and no, they have I mean, to speak for speak this. for yourself, baby. I'm here I, I, for the I'm, long. Yeah, listen, <laughs> as long as I have so, two hands, I, I'm a, I'm a right. Good sure, 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 sure. And I and I say all that to say, um, these companies, every one of them, no one is immune, has to think about the future and where the future of gaming will be. And 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 there are certain markets that are mature. There are certain markets that are growing. And I am not surprised to see the push for PlayStation into PC. And I think you will see that more. And I think you will see everyone moving their games into more places than we are used to. I'll leave it there. There's more to say, but just think about well, it. You, you guys Everborn. can talk about that, I would imagine, but, but, on Saturday. Uh, we, uh, you Everborn. might get that. What is this 55 inch TV crap? What do you mean 50? Like, you don't have like a 75 or 77? No, no, no. no. What is this 55? Wait a minute. What is, 55 is for the bedroom, 65 is for the living room. Okay. That's uh, 55, dude. Uh, that's way we, too small. Anyway. We, we but, but <laughs> no, when dude. I when I do replace it, we'll we we're gonna put the we're gonna replace the 65 at some point, uh, with maybe a C4, C5, gotta go LG. Put that in the living room. Move the sixty-five to the bedroom. Put the fifty-five someplace else in the house. But right now, it's fifty-five in the bedroom. Well, that's fair. I mean, look, that, that's a that's a that's a fine TV. But listen, what a what a fantastic what a fantastic show, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully, you learn something because I know that I always do when I hang out with these gentlemen. Uh, oh, the Longhouse Gaming Podcast, folks. He has gifted while he was a panel member five <laughs> double barrel gaming memberships. Dude, that is crazy generous of you, Viking. Yeah, Thank no you problem, so man. much for that, brother. Super appreciate it. Um and uh uh Spartan661, who's been a channel member for eight months, says throw some Xbox owned skins for characters in the WoW and StarCraft world games. Make sure that they have unique perks when you buy them. That's the how that's that's how you use that to market. Yeah, that's a fantastic point. And our good friend, all the way from Hawaii, Nino Vistic drops has gifted again a one double barrel gaming membership, brother. That is again. Crazy generous of you. He does it all the time. Olo Aloha here from New Rochelle, New York. Let's get to the outros. Viking, we got to talk you forget, about... You forgot the last one. Last super chat. Oh, was, JD was, Gamer. Oh, oh okay. There's, JD there's Gamer. You actually just JD. dropped two. So JD oh, Gamer, two. thank there's you so two, much yes. for the generosity, brother. He drops not one but two super chats. The first one of $5. He says, how many times do I have to say 
have to say this. Sony reminds me of Blockbuster. If they continue to measure success the old way until they no longer exist. I mean, they're, they're going to have to make some major changes. And that's why Hiroki Totoki, who is the money man, is running the show. A great point, J.D. And he drops an additional $2 super chat and says, By the way, pathetic port begging phonies got no games, as he always says. So, J.D. Gamer. I need a shirt. I just we, need, we, we need We definitely need a shirt for that. <laughs> so, Black Viking, uh, I, this morning... Uh, listened to the Longhouse Gaming Podcast episode from yesterday. Oh, and folks, nice, I'm here man. to tell you, it was staggeringly great. What I love about these guys is they're like brothers. The three of them, they talk, they laugh, literally. they curse. Well, yes, they're <laughs> literal brothers, actually. That, that is very true. Yeah. But here's the thing, folks. They have exploded on the scene. But right now, they're on the hunt for two thousand subscribers you know something they are damn close how close well they're at 1.87 the, at my last check which means that they are a handful away if you're not already subscribe to the longhouse gaming podcast with love black viking black skellington and supernova you are mm -hmm. doing it wrong brother sell your brand uh before i start selling right uh, I want to just tell Everborn Saga, welcome to the PC Club, uh, <laughs> for one, and and then two console experience club, uh, sir. Console uh, experience. Con <laughs> <laughs> you can mask it, whatever. Diddy's house is still Diddy's house, baby. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> and Diddy and, like the party. Oh, <laughs> Diddy like the. <laughs> And second, and second, in 20 years, we'll all have Stephen Hawking accessibility controllers. So you don't have to worry about getting carpal tunnel. We'll be able to play our games just fine. Okay. <laughs> we have that Stephen Hawking tech available yes, for all right. of us gamers. All Literally. right. So, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, my name is Black Viking. Y'all, y'all know that by now. But, uh, yeah, I'm the host of the Longhouse Gaming Podcast with, uh, my literal brother and my longtime friend, man, of like, 20 something years and do we cut up we cut up chat is wild yeah it's fun uh, <laughs> oh, it's a fun show a lot of fun uh yeah we're really close to 2000 man um i think we, yeah our next show is so we do a show tuesdays and thursdays at 8 p.m eastern next show is tomorrow we'll have david david jaffe on and fame from level one on so it's going to be uh a cursing field show as i <laughs> as i would like to damn say. david but, jackie's yeah. a lot of fun <laughs> he is yeah yeah so uh it's, it's gonna be cool to have him on um be a part of the gang for the day so it's gonna be cool man so that's it man longhouse gaming podcast is i just dropped it in the chat folks i made it super easy okay. for you they're at oh, sweet, one 1.83 on the richter scale which means that they are close so here it is folks there you go that there it is for you to Almost click on there. and subscribe to the longhouse gaming podcast phenomenal group of uh group of men they the show is fun they have fun you have fun if you're in the chat you have fun as well I highly recommend you add it to your listening pleasure right alongside everyone on this panel that has uh, or are part of other shows. Hargeet Chani, speaking of being a part of, well, you are a part of a lot of shows. <laughs> You're a part, obviously. Yeah. But, you know, the main draw here is, of course, the show that you uh, that you work with behind the scenes with Gaz and Asa, Game On Daily. They both have their own channels. They have the Game On, cha Game On Daily channel, which, of course is separate from the source master himself and of course ace and mr vr himself but sell the brand where could people check that out yeah so uh certainly check out gameondaily.com and then youtube.com slash game on daily uh and then suffix sauce which is gaz's channel where he does all mm -hmm. sorts of fun things and <laughs> you can check out his fun things there uh you can check out asa on gaming arcadia uh he does a podcast pretty much every day as well um, there's uh, one for each uh, console type and, or platform, and then uh, he does a lot of uh, game streams. Uh, so does uh, Gaz now. He does some game streaming as well. I'll start uh, using you know, my channel to do some of that as well. Mine's uh, at Hargeechani1. So at some point, you can uh, check that out. Yes. Uh, and then I'll be on uh, you know, uh, 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 See Money and Doodles uh, Night Shift. Uh, that's Friday at 6 p.m. Uh, U.S. Eastern Time. That's uh, on Point for Gamers. That's the channel. 
Uh, so check that out. And then back to Sunday with uh, Fonz on Fonz Gaming's channel yes. uh, at 6 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time uh, with Games Talk Live. So check that out. And then right. we'll be back here next Wednesday in, with indeed. whatever the crazy news we'll, we'll bring. <laughs> so. I, and I'm sure there's going to be something. I, I kind of feel like we're on the cusp of something big. Uh, I, I just got my spider sense is going off, but Chaos Ante, let's talk about the Gaming Circle podcast Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time with you and, of course, Everborn Saga, where I can already see that there's going to be a major play, uh, 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 a PC conversation to be had. He's already selling his wares. He's trying to sell me on PC. I say nay. I'm still holding out. Talk about wait that. Till, wait till you see that uh, video demonstration, boom, and then talk to me again if you say nay. Listen, I, I I want to, but I know that it'd be a waste of money for me. That's just, but that's just me. Sell the brand, dude. Talk about it. Where can people subscribe? Help your channel grow, but also tune in on Monday evenings with John Wolf, where you mm. definitely do some deep dives into mm -hmm. PC gaming, where he tells you hashtag get a PC, and it's not get a PC, it's get a PC. <laughs> well, th thank you. First and foremost, it's always great to, to be here with you guys, and of course. The, the unofficial third chair, Mr. Black Viking. I hope I hope we see more of you on this on these here program. Always great to, to to chat with you, go back and forth. Appreciate you, man. Thanks, man. And of course, whenever the the, the slanderous one can make an appearance, it's always 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 lovely to have you on this program as well. Uh, yes, you can catch me. You know myself and the aforementioned Everborn Saga GCP Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Call us GI Joe. We're part of your morning Saturday morning cartoons. We go PG 13 on that one. You know. We'll, we, we, we got guns, but we only shoot lasers. Calm down. Everything's okay. This weekend, of course, we, we will take Mr. Everborn Saga to task because he was the biggest, like, PC hater. Oh, Lord. And now, oh, what a, what a world we live in. It's going to be interesting. And then, of course, on Monday nights, myself and John Wolf, where we're trying to redefine PCMR. I say it's the MR is, is for multi-platform respect. Others say PCMR is for so that you can so that the missionary gamers don't rant if you if, if you're if you're a 30 30 frames hater then you're ranting and maybe you need to get your pc yourself a pc so that pcmr can mean missionary gamers like you don't rant anymore but we'll see we can talk about that one on monday night thank you all so much for being here as usual you know we keep it slanderous but we always do do it in good fun and we'll see y'all next week Thank you so much for being a part of the show. And lastly, Everborn Saga, do you have anything you want to say on the way out the door? Obviously, yes. we, you know, you, you, you're still doing and working behind the scenes on the Everborn Saga. Where can people check that out? Uh, well, before you check out Everborn Saga, check out Harold Halibut, which came out on oh, yeah. Game Pass today. Dude, that game looks amazing. Um, I cannot wait to get they, into it. It's literally right modeled. Now stop motion instead yes. of doing these 3d models and put yep. it in a game check it out if you if you're not on game pass i don't know what's wrong with you but it's only 30 dollars to buy it if you're not on game pass check that out then once you're done checking that out go to everbornsaga.com and to answer your question boom we are on the cusp of launching the next everborn saga kickstarter because we just finished ariel's adventure chapter two Nice. I know I've been promising it for a long time, but it is done now. We are going to set up the Kickstarter so that we can do the printing and publishing and things like that. But the book itself is done. And so look out for that. I'm going to be doing a whole press tour for that. Nice. Um, but EverbornSaga.com if you want to see what you're going to get into there. And uh, check out Harold Halibut. Nice. nice. Well, listen, ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you so much. We had over 600 live viewers. And again, Twitter has become a thing. We had almost 200 people watching from Twitter. That is pretty cool. If you're new and you're finding the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing. We do this Monday through Friday. Five different shows, five different panels, all great content. And we never use hate mongering or clickbait to get you in. You come in. We we, we we talk about what's advertised when we don't we you know obviously sometimes we have to course correct live on the air and make those uh, audibles but for the most part what you see and you read in the tweets is what you're going to get hopefully you enjoyed enough of today's conversation to hit the like button and of course i want to say a big thank you to all of the channel members as well as all of the super chats that came in they definitely allow for us to do some big giveaways as well as keep up with the joneses with new equipment 
and new artwork because that all costs money. And a bit, and we're, we're obviously incredibly humbled and grateful for the support. And of course, I'll close out the show with something that's incredibly important to me. Hopefully, one day it'll be important. Mr. Super you. Chat. Oh, we got another one. Okay, hold on a second. Let me just get that. That just came in. Oh, Spartan six six one. What's going on, brother? Welcome and thank you so much for the very generous two dollars super chat. I have to watch X Men ninety seven's new episode. I only got halfway through. Holy shit, dude! It opens up in complete madness. X Men ninety seven. That if you are not watching it, what are you doing? But <laughs> <laughs> I don't want no spoilers again. Nope. Um, you know, I do like to close out the show with something that's incredibly important to me. Uh, hopefully one day it'll be important to you. And that's something that my dad taught us when we were kids and we say, Craig, treat others how you want to be treated. And also it doesn't cost anything to be nice. You live by those rules, son. I can guarantee you, you're going to have an awesome day. So take care everyone. And we'll see you next week on the newest episode of primetime gaming with Mr. Boomstick and friends. (laughs) 